who agrees that it's kind of blurry to figure out like what sexualized content is in regards to some of these hot tub streams? Can you can I see a show of hands yeah. for who thinks that? Okay. All of these people that have their hands up right now, keep them up, get them up there. Could you please keep your hand up if you would be comfortable if a 13 year old were to come onto Twitch and do an amaranth bikini hot tub stream? Hippy dippy round table talking about vaccine. <gasps> no, the vaccine patents. Oh, this is an issue I care about. Oh no, come on. Oh, come on. You are, this is, this is 100. I'm sorry. I know this is my opening statement, but it's too late. It's already I like, that a lot of people, they already um, got their nine people because Bill Gates has like a vested interest in this. No I can't, I'm not going to jump kill. on this. Quick thing. Now this is a nine person panel, I guess now, uh, again, it's the last one. So I'm dropping all standards. Uh, but, uh, so just to be clear for everybody, if it's nine person, that means it's going to be more difficult for me to moderate. And I already, uh, am, am leaving septic shock. So let's all acknowledge that a little bit and do our best to follow the rules, okay? Destiny, I don't need to explain the normal rules to you. You're used to them, right? You know the rules? Just don't shout over other people? Uh, just basically, like, if I speak up, I'm just moderating, get quiet, basically, right? Okay. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Okay. So we're going to keep going around the room. So next it's going to be who hasn't... Sorry, the, the f camera's all just changed. So who hasn't speak, uh, spoken yet? Can you raise your hand? Eris too, I think. Uh, okay, so we're gonna go Maddie, Counterpoints, Eris, then Destiny, okay? Maddie, you're first. And let's try to make these intro statements a little shorter because we're running short on time. Hi, um, so I think that it's, it would be both morally, ethically, and just, uh, I think it's a good idea for the United States to provide um, more support in the way of not only opening up IP, of the vaccines, but also helping to provide some of the raw materials that are required in order to produce the vaccines, because that actually is one of the biggest blockers worldwide in um, ramping up production. And it's, you know, it's a little tough to think about if you're a worker in India and you are helping to manufacture the AstraZeneca vaccine or something else knowing that all of that is then going to be exported out of your country, despite your country suffering and having countless people die because they don't have access. Um, I think that is an area where the United States can be a leader and go in and help the uh, Indian government more widely distribute vaccines. That's also a way we can help them more widely manufacture vaccines. Um, and especially with the increased um, influence of the Chinese government internationally, this is a great place for us to um, emerge as a leader and build that relationship because that's something we're going to have to pay closer attention to going forward. Okay, next is going to be Eris. Hey, um, so just in general, I mean, to my knowledge, there is a vaccine surplus. Um, but I'm not too educated on like the ins and outs and like pragmatically on getting the vaccines um, to India. But in regards to helping out India, like I'm pretty right wing when it comes to uh, immigration. And if anyone here is like, you know, against the legal, like illegal immigration, so I should have said illegal immigration, um, then you would be very concerned in general with issues that are going on globally. And uh, like, um, and this issue in India is going to cause so many other problems and it's going to just cause like a domino effect of, you know, what's going on around the world. And it's just going to lead to more, you know, um, uh, refugees, illegal immigration and just tons of other problems around the world. So it just makes sense to try to help India as much as possible, especially considering the amazing position the U.S. is in because, you know, so many Americans don't even want vaccines. So, you know, why not, you know, try to help out other people? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> OK, next is Connor. Yeah, everybody said the same thing. Uh, so I'm going to say, Dylan, if you end the hippy dippy, I am going to come up there and I'm either going to show you a really good time or a really bad time, depending on what we end up doing. So that that's pretty much half my statement. Um, the, the other half of the statement is basically like, yes, when you're on an airplane and the oxygen cuts out or whatever, you're supposed to put the mask on yourself before you help other people. So America first instincts right there. However, that being said, you're also supposed to put oxygen on other people so they don't get fucked over. Um, there's a whole bunch of regional um, and geopolitical reasons to do 
do this. Uh, China is a competitor using India to offset, creating a strong alliance. Uh, India is technically another colony from, uh, you know, the UK or the Anglo sphere. Um, so we share languages, some cultural traditions, some governmental traditions. Um, there's a whole host of reasons to help out our good, our, our good buddies, India. Um, and I'll yield right there. Okay, uh, now it's going to... Oh, and again, it's not like I want to end Hippy Dippy. I just... I love the format. I love the show. I just hate all of the people involved. That's all. Okay, well, I love you. Is that not enough? No, it is not. Okay, okay well, Destiny, Destiny loves you enough to be here. Is that not enough? No, it does not. Because he did have an opportunity to come here, and he and he did this. He chose the other show instead of this show. Okay, Destiny's a bad boy. And now he's asking last second. Like I always. didn't know the other show was going to This ain't go the somewhere. prime times royale, okay? You can't just come in and come out like anywhere. We're not like a fucking bar. T- We're not like a fucking open whorehouse where you can just come in at any time, okay? Okay, okay. Dil- Dylan, you know damn well that the abusive relationships sometimes have the better sex. So Destiny is just priming you metaphorically, not literally, for just like an abusive emotional relationship so you know the sex is going to be better later you know what i don't think he needs to prime me for that i already have that with all my panel guests okay <laughs> i'm gonna throw it over to destiny now uh, okay what just what is the exact question so that i know because i hear a lot basically of the, the exact question was should we like should we help india it's a question of america first versus the international but it's basically just swayed like swerved over to the patent thing immediately Okay, yeah, because there are two fundamentally different questions. I think that we should help India in any way, size, shape, or form. Um, but, but I think that the, the patent conversation and then like people obsessing over like Bill Gates' answer to it, I think is a massive red herring. Um, like even if we did release not only the patent but all the other parallel technologies, it would take them years to get up to speed. Um, the patents themselves won't help them with anything. They don't have the manufacturing capacity or capability to make these vaccines. And the the biggest issue is that if you did open, if we found a way to get through all of the tech, tech, the technology, all of the manufacturing errors all of the transfer of like actual knowledge for producing these vaccines, if we found a way to do all of that, if any part of that process was messed up and there was any issue with any of these vaccines, you would continue to fervor like this really rabid anti-vax like idea that has like taken over the world where people are like canceling vaccines because of like minor problems and stuff. And that would just like exacerbate that issue as well. So yes, we should be helping India in any possible way we can, um, whether that means subsidizing or paying for, you know, vaccines that we're sending over or whatever. But uh, the, the patent question is like a really big red herring, I think. I don't think it's like really relevant to this conversation at all okay so again there's nine people here so i'm gonna be a little like i don't know a little like dictator over here okay little francisco franco a little tito a little something okay so i need you all to please follow the rules now it is open to the floor but he to raise his hand out first so i'm just gonna pass it to him all right um okay so just a couple of things to respond to maddie you said that uh, and this isn't just you. I'm not just trying to pick on you. I also saw many people on Twitter saying this as well. That how do you think the people in India feel when they're export when they're making life saving medication and exporting it across the world? That is not happening anymore. They've stopped exporting. Okay, oh. they're completely using everything domestically now. And the manufacturing um, uh, the manufacturing CEO, the CEO of the manufacturing plant, he said. We used exports as a source of rev- uh, uh, generating revenue so that we can continue to expand our manufacturing. As they, they just don't have the money to be able to expand their manufacturing fast enough to be able to ramp up production. So it's kind of like a balancing thing where it's not necessarily bad to export because it's a fantastic form of raising revenue. So that's the first thing. The second thing to, to piggyback off of what Destiny said, this has been one of my major concerns as someone who is in um, so my, my my field of study is in radiation physics and radiation protection in, in particular. I have been trained to think of the worst case scenario. What Destiny brought up is the worst case scenario. If one of these vaccines, a batch of them, let's say, God forbid, kills a thousand people or something, you can literally set back the entire vaccination movement by decades. It's We're at a point where because the vaccine issue is such a hot topic right now, it's very important that things are done carefully, that safety corners are not cut. And again, to, to just go back to what I was saying before, it seems to be the case that when manufacturing facilities are up to par, these corporations license it out because obviously there's a there's a competition obviously the 
uh, Moderna, J and J, uh, Pfizer, all of these uh, corporations want to be the first ones in India, want to dominate the market share. So it's not as though they're like, no, we're too good to, uh, we're too good, we don't want to help poor people. Which is the narrative that I've been seeing a lot of that. Oh, these companies don't want to help poor people. I've even seen lefties saying that it's for population control. Like we need to fucking. It, it, this is turning into blue anon shit. So yeah, I think it's really okay. Important. But but you don't. When need did lefties man. listen to Alex Jones? You, you don't need to straw man. I first of all, I've never seen it. Like I've never seen a single lefty argue that like it's because they're trying to do population control. I'm sure there's probably yeah. something, but nobody on this I've panel has done this. I don't think we need to like. Okay, nobody on this panel. Okay, nobody on this panel. Yeah. But but it no one no one no but, serious commentator yeah, or no someone like, might have like, memed. Like, I, that's, yeah. that would be someone is someone making sorry. that you, argument okay, 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 we're gonna uh you're gonna give you about thirty seconds to finish it and yeah, then yeah. it's gonna I go somewhere else. Okay. Okay, yeah. So yeah, basically, I think it's crazy that some people are saying that, um, oh, how can we trust these corporations? We should let co governments all over the world set their own safety standards. I think this is absolutely ridiculous. I think Western scientific safety standards are fucking the best in the world, and I am not willing to cut any sort of corners that, to, to p potentially cause a catastrophe. Nobody said anything about cutting safety procedures. Well, when you, when you, when you get said, rid of... No, 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 hold on, hold on. You yeah. had your turn. Now it's my turn. So... Um, when you say you're, you're conflating multiple issues in order to, I don't know, I, it feels like you're kind of like rooted in on this particular, uh, like the Bill Gates thing. Um, I don't know. Like I, this is, this is the thing we had a little back and forth about that. I recognize the question is, is much broader. I do think that the IP question is probably not the most important part of all this. But However, it's turned into the main discussion. Uh, well, that's, that's I think that's, that's the point. You, that's you, though. And now what you're doing in this particular part is you've merged two different concerns, which is safety standards. Nobody has ever advocated for safety standards. In fact, I explicitly advocated that what we should do is we should choose to be the leaders on this and we should publish the most the most accurate and up to date. Um, it re regardless of any of any IP concerns, the most safest manufacturing, the most safest ins inspection procedures. And we should give that to other countries. Now, the concern I do have with IP enforcement being an issue is that while I agree that corporations do want to distribute their vaccine, they do want to go into countries because they can make money. Of course, that, that, yeah. introduces, that introduces a major profit incentive that we don't have to deal with if you waive the IP and you say this is a global emergency. We're not going to enforce you being able to sue another country. And I want to bring in another thing, a historical example that we have in the past. You say that somehow, I don't know how you've tied these two things together, that waiving the IP protections for it would somehow undermine people's faith in vaccines. No, that's not true at all. No, no, that's We're not gonna... what I said. That's not what I that said. What come, said. On. No, 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 no. come on, no, no, no. Come on, come on, come on. I said if the demon okay. I said I if there was... can't run okay. the... Uh, that, that, okay, give, give, give me... Get that. Okay, so I'll give him 10 seconds to clarify what he meant. Then I, 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 I specifically said, if you waive the IP and a catastrophe happens where a vaccine, batch of vaccines is unsafely made. I didn't say waiving the IP alone. Of course, if you waive the IP and the vaccines are flawless... Okay, nothing okay. would happen. The IP will, is, is irrelevant to that discussion. If a disaster happens, as we've already seen, guess what? IP law was enforced when the J&J &J disaster happened. And, and I can tell you firsthand, right down the street from me, there are copies upon copies of the Epic Times with, with their, oh, the J&J &J vaccine is killing people. That is a problem that is separate from IP. It has jack shit to do with IP. IP has nothing to do with manufacturing disasters. In fact, but I will say that there are some ways in which the IP could impede us avoiding manufacturing disasters, but I don't think the IP has anything to do with manufacturing disasters. Manufacturing disasters are going to be used by bad actors all over the place. In fact, that's why we should commit, as the United States is one of the most powerful and most advanced medical countries in the entire world, that we should commit to making sure that no disasters happen, regardless of what that means, even if it has nothing to do with IP or else. But the problem is that as it stands right now, Part of the problem that we're encountering, hence why we've can, why Joe Biden considered to waive the IP, is that people can't start working on manufacturing these things when they're at risk of being sued. Now you can have that happen. Do you want to know what would be? Plans. Do you want to know would be worse of a disaster if we have what happened during the Spanish flu, which is that vaccine shortages um, and and medicine shortages during that time were so rare that you had 
random doctors brewing up their own vaccines completely illegally and under the table. I would rather have it above the table and just not have corporations being able to strong arm their own influence over other countries. And that would be infinitely better. Now, so Real yeah. quick on that. So Moderna already said they weren't going to enforce Maddie, I wrote their, your hand. Uh, I wrote your name oh. down. Don't worry about yeah. it. So yeah, real quick. So we're talking about exporting safety standards to other countries. We're not exporting like how to make the perfect like Wendy's square cheeseburger. Exactly. Um, you can't. You can't. You can't just export these things. There's like only so many people in the world that even know how to operate these machines. That only so many right. companies in the world can even manufacture. Um, and there are like shortages of this talent even within these companies. Like sure. even Moderna needs more of these people to do it. So the idea that we can just like undo and, a and patent. I don't. Need you to say okay after everything I say. I know I'm correct. I don't need you to reaffirm it. I don't know why you keep saying okay after everything. But the Wait, idea I'm, that I'm like you can. You. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not done. Is. You had your turn. I'm just talking. So the idea. Well, the point is that you specifically said we should export safety standards to other countries. You can't do that. I'm telling you that you have a fundamental misunderstanding of how this technology works and how it's applied because we can't just export the safety standards to other countries. This isn't just a matter of intellectual property. It's a matter of human capital. It's a matter of like the actual know-how to operate these manufacturing plants and these machines. It's like some of the processes for this are incredibly complicated and you can't just say like oh well here you go now you have the technology to go and do it if that was true everybody around the world would be making the Moderna vaccine they're not the patents aren't stopping anybody like in order to file a patent you already have to disclose how the technology works Moderna's done that it's not like there are people out there making the vaccine anyway the whole patent question is just a giant red herring all of the manufacturing on these vaccines are moving as quickly as they can and all of the plants are totally tapped out in the manufacturing as it's happening and the idea that just because some mistakes have happened so far if other huge vaccines mistakes were to happen because these were being made in an unsafe manner in another country becomes irrelevant is absolutely not true either just because some mistakes have happened that doesn't irrelevant. you did you said that it's always no, going to be you said that it's always IP, and it's not gonna, and it is relevant it is relevant it is relevant because if other people were to start to making these so you were misleading and saying that well there's already what been johnson and john i'm trying to explain but you won't shut the fuck up and let me so you were already oh, saying nice. like oh well down Man, the street you're really already they're super mad aren't you Okay, okay, wait, okay. Is there any, is I understand. There like a, wait, okay, I understand yeah. that you two are dating. Well, I'm just, no, no, I'm just trying to finish my point. Yeah. You got to let me finish. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, my bad. can't complain about not letting me finish, then not let me finish. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, I understand you love each other very, very much. Destiny, you finish what you're saying, then I'll throw it straight over to Demon. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um. Uh. Yeah, sorry, I didn't know this was a Destiny dating show. Um. Demon, if you want to hop into my DMs after, feel free to. Um. But anyway, so you were saying earlier that, like, people are already using the propaganda stuff on the Johnson & Johnson. Like, this idea that, like, well, some very, very minor mistakes have happened, therefore any mistake can be allowed is just absolutely not the case. Um. The transfer of capital needed to make these vaccines won't happen with anything related to do with uh, intellectual property. And if it were to happen, this would be on the scale of years. And as was already correctly stated by you earlier, Diva Mama, the most important thing is to vaccinate as many people as possible. That has nothing to do with transferring IP rights. And also, Demon we can't mom. even. Oh, sorry, can I just say quickly? You're asking government. You're trying to trust government no, across apparently. the world when we can't even get basic workers' rights across the world to be standardized. So how okay, can you Demon have? Okay, Diva Mama. Diva Dima, I'm sorry, but there's yeah, a, there's okay. a board yeah, yeah, It's no, my no, people. Like, it's really funny. Like, I feel like I'm getting like a bunch of weird and and like like they're like inter switching between what arguments actually being made. Now, I I already agree that there are that the IP is not the biggest thing standing in the way. However, I think that there is um we've already agreed both Hemed and Destiny in this have 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 admitted that there is a big interest that corporations have in being able to be the ones who get to go in there and and manufacture that. I think that waiving the IP brings that out of the question, okay? So, but originally, of course, the question was not about the IP. And I would say that we should help in any way that we can. I'm not a doctor, but I do believe that um, there's probably a lot of things that we can do. And I do believe, and I also, I don't think, I don't agree or, or accept the idea that like exporting s uh, inspection or safety standards wouldn't help at all. In fact, the core of Dr. Heem's argument is that American safety, manufacturing, and expertise is what we need to get everywhere else in the world. So, like, there's contradicting arguments. It's going not a on. set of OSHA guidelines. I'm sorry. But God, I never said that it was. I mean, I, is that supposed to be like your gotcha? That's what you're like, making I it never, sound like. I, like, oh, it's just safety no, I'm standards. Really, no, I'm really not. I just well, the enforcement that, of well, those safety standards is important too, right? Yeah, but how do you? But how do you start the ball rolling on that? You have to. If you have a, a process, if our processes for investigating, inspecting, and passing vaccines is so good, then we should certainly be able to give that away to other countries and get it's them. It's not that great it, though. It like we, we, people okay, have, we're saying the same things. Okay, 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 okay. You're making a different argument than Heem. So. Heem okay. says that ours is the Wait. best, but apparently we can't. No. 
Okay, I'm gonna go back into septic shock real quick, okay? So, D-Mama's gonna finish their point, then we're gonna go to Maddie, and then we're going to go from there, okay? Uh -huh. Wonderful. D-Mama. My point is that, yes, we should help India in any way imaginable. Uh, sure, I don't think the IP is the most important thing. I do think that there are ways in which the IP rules um, can be... Uh, uh, can, can perhaps hinder this. I don't believe that we should have IP and profit incentive stand in the way of our uh, response to this pandemic. It already has enough and it's had disastrous consequences. Um, and yeah, um, there's a whole lot of other parts of this that we could discuss if we want to. So yeah, that's my point. Okay, Maddie, we're gonna go to you. Uh, Nacho, I saw you raise your hand uh, and I saw California raise their hand, but I, okay, got it, Maddie. Great. So I think we're getting caught up on this idea of the plausibility of, oh, well, even if they release the patent, is that even gonna change anything? Is that going to mean that this, this vaccine can go into production? And I wanted to just quickly point out that there are plenty of vaccines and medications that are made by generic pharmaceutical manufacturers that are safe and effective <laughs> and normally have a much better cost benefit analysis as well. Like that's why they're way cheaper because they don't come with the brand name um, that also has marketing and other things that are baked into that price tag. So I think, um, you know, it, it's important to remember that this isn't, this isn't something that's new. This is something that happens routinely with vaccines, with medications. mRNA vaccines is are that brand new. I'm not done, no, 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 no. You can have your turn. I waited throughout all sure. of that. Um, so this is something that's happened. Another thing that I think is really important to point out is that there were taxpayer dollars used in the development of these vaccines. So I don't know that it's necessarily the right call to then have all of the proceeds and profit coming from those vaccines going to private manufacturers, because that's another thing that we have to consider, especially as those uh, manufacturers ramp up worldwide distribution. Um, and then lastly, I, despite thinking, you know, my position is that I think the, the vaccine patent should be released and made um, open to other manufacturers. However, I think we won't see any meaningful change in the vaccine distribution worldwide, especially in um, developing countries, until there's the question of equitable distribution and what that might look like. So even if we were to ramp up production, that doesn't always necessarily translate into equitable distribution. And that I think is going to have a much greater impact on making sure that we get the world vaccinated. Okay, we're gonna go over now to Nacho. That's a great point, Nacho. I just wish I could hear it. <laughs> So I was just pointing out basically the, uh, reiterating some things and just adding like we already asked this question like why don't why aren't all, all pharmaceutical companies like producing vaccines is because it's a very it's a very stringent process like we're already basically at our capacity for like how many uh, vaccines we can produce so like in order for us to 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 do this in other places and even if we, like we lifted the patent we would then have to bring people over there away from the facilities where they're already manufacturing these things at capacity everybody's being worked to the bone like already working as much as they possibly can so moving this somewhere else taking people away who are already maximizing the process here uh, and potentially for the rest of the world um, would just slow down that process so it doesn't really make sense i mean like i'm all for helping india but i just think that we already have an excess of vaccination so it would probably make more sense for us to keep producing excess and ship them over there i mean i, I don't know Okay, next is going to be counter. Uh, and then we're gonna probably try to drop the hand raising, but I saw the two people raise their hands. So I'm gonna go to CTV because he hasn't spoken forever. Then yeah, so so I understand, basically maybe I could get some clarification here. This is more posed as a question than a challenge. Um, so I actually had to look up like a historical example, uh, which was the uh, polio vaccine was uh, left unpatented. It was given away for free. Uh, the person who uh, created it basically said that it was better for the world to have it than for everybody to not have it. Um, and I understand that they're basically like, maybe we're at capacity for qualified manufacturers of uh, vaccines right now. Um, but at the same time, uh, one of the things that's been repeated previously, uh, 
uh, throughout this entire pandemic was that this is going to be with us for decades to come. Uh, COVID is very potentially going to be similar to uh, the flu, where we're going to have like annual se annual COVID seasons. It'll kill less people, but it will be around uh, going going forward. And so, so that's kind of my thing where uh, maybe in the short term, releasing IP doesn't make sense, um, but maybe in the long term, it does. And maybe building up uh, these... Uh, the capacities of uh, foreign nations is going to have geopolitical effects. So, for instance, if we export this uh, technology to India and then they sell it to China and then they sell it to Europe and like all that kind of stuff, um, th there's going to be a whole bunch of geopolitical leverage that we lose. Um, but there's also a whole bunch of geopolitical leverage that we gain uh, by being selfless with our intellectual property. Um, so I, I wanted to pose that more as a as a question than a than a, a challenge is what do we lose by opening this up to the world? with the understanding that if you manufacture this shit yourself and you kill your own citizens, that's kind of on you. We just gave you the patents, the ideas, and the standards that we follow. Okay. Uh, I'm going to give it the CTV and then Destiny, and then we're dropping hand-raising it back to open format. Okay, so, Stephen Mama, the reason why you can't just have, like, you know, these federal government rules be able to, if you do this right here, exactly like this, we're going to ship the idea out for you to be able to do the exact same thing right it doesn't work it doesn't work from a practical example that i'm about to give you give you i served on three of the same class of submarine and all of them had shit that was a little bit different about all of them so imagine trying to set up a business even though you're going to be manufacturing one thing in an area that doesn't have the same resources in the area doesn't have the same say electrical supply doesn't have the same the building materials it doesn't have all the same things so this like you have this one this is how you do this but then when you get down on the field and you try to do it this is why shipping that idea just it doesn't work this is where like you can have some guidelines but doing it from there it it just doesn't work right so for the rest of it uh I'm kind of lost now, so Destiny, kick it off. Okay, one <laughs> second, though. For everybody in chat, tell me to call this person or that person. Uh, I know how to do my job. Please sit in your seat, okay? Destiny, continue. Um, just for a couple things that were brought up. So manufacturing generics is something that companies can do. mRNA vaccines are a cutting edge, brand new technology. So these are some of the first mRNA vaccines in the world that have been produced. The way that we manufacture these is not like a well understood science such that everybody in the world is ready to just switch over and do it. So we can't just make generic versions of these vaccines like we could like with other drugs. Um, it, it, like it is a very new technology. Um, in terms of like tax dollars have gone into manufacturing these, um, like different companies have taken like different different levels of money at different stages of like distribution but like most of the research and development for this has all been like fronted by capital like from private companies um, the idea that it's like been a whole bunch of public research or whatever that's gone into developing these vaccines is not necessarily true um when people are talking about like what's the harm in releasing like the IPs or all the technology related to this, um, I mean, technically, if you do it right, there's not really a harm, but there would need to be like an enormous cash transfer that happens to these companies if that happens, because pharmaceuticals are a very, very, very risky business. And if we were to just go in and when somebody stumbles upon like a really effective treatment to just completely deprive them of the ability to make money for that, you are like putting uh, potentially like a huge harm in the way of the pharmaceutical industry. And like the public private partnership that happens with pharmaceuticals is probably one of the best examples we have of like public private partnership and we probably wouldn't want to harm that type of innovation that occurs in the us can can i can i respond as well okay so also i just the um it, I looked this up because a lot of people were saying why can't we just publicly fund uh, vaccine and medicines and all this shit only one out of five thousand drugs actually make it to market i don't think that we want to waste our taxpayer money on 4,999 failed projects to get one successful one. It's better that private capital go, I, I don't know, why are you making that face, Demon Mama? This <laughs> wait, is a fact. I mean, wait, wait, that's that's silly. You're saying that, you're saying that, that, that we shouldn't, that, that we should take advantage of, pr of private capital, which makes a lot of money, but despite the fact that Yeah, because they can, wait, wait, because oh. they can take tons of risks. Wait, they wait, they wait, can afford wait, wait. to lose. Heemed, heemed. 
You asked her a question. Let her okay. ask okay. the question. I, I mean, Heem, look, I understand, like, I don't know. Like, we can talk about this another time. Yeah, too. we have like, to talk one-on-one, like, one, obviously. It feels like you're super mad, like, about it, and I don't really entirely get it because, like... Wait, hold on. Look, what did Heem say that was super mad? Just respond to his point. I just no, said... Stop ad I don't okay. Okay. get it. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, well, let me... Okay, I don't care what you're going to do off here. Please ask the question. Yeah, okay, so my question was... Well, no, you I, was think... I was talking to Demon Mama. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, okay, go ahead. Sorry. Demon Mama. Okay, okay, there was there was a question. Like you like you asked why was she was. making the face and then she was answering that, right? Oh, okay. Go ahead. Okay, okay. Sure. Mama. I, I, I was okay. reacting and, and was going to wait my turn to respond to you. I don't think that the argument that um oh well it takes lots of tries to come up with something, therefore the private industry should do it. In fact, no, like th this is th part of the problem that we have is that we don't have investment um in uh in risky drugs that would be beneficial to society. In fact, they could be so beneficial, it would just be an abstracted value. I think that um, there's, a, there's a lot to be talked about with regard to how public-private uh, stuff works. Um, and I don't know, there's a lot of that there. But I think that uh, to, to sort of respond to all the things we've been talking about here, if we can all admit here that the mRNA vaccines are brand new, that they're not, nobody's cutting edge yet. That's all the more reason to remove every single roadblock that we can to getting them all over the world. Vaccinations benefit all of us. So we want to get as many people- just wrong. Capable, excuse me, capable of, of, of producing them as quickly as possible. That's what we want. And that goes for any vaccine. Now I would go further. We're not having this discussion here, but we could any other time about how we go about developing, researching and developing um, medicines. I disagree with the idea that like, that, that like, because there's a lot of trial and error in it, that it's necessarily an unproductive or, or, um, or non-profitable venture. It obviously is. Otherwise pharmaceuticals wouldn't be billionaire billionaires. That's ridiculous. The idea that just because it's, that it's high risk means that you can't do it via other structures. There's a million ways to approach this that doesn't have to be just private. And there are downsides of private, of, of, re, of relying exclusively on private um, investment. For example, rare conditions don't tend to have a whole lot of private investment because those would not be profitable. So there's some issues with that. And I know you're getting, I can tell you're like, I don't know what you're melting down about. But I'm like, melting I, down because you're, you're basically, you're, I, you're basically agreeing with me, but disagreeing at the same time. You're no, saying wait, that- You interrupted me to question me. Like you're the one who's been disagreeing with me. So what it seems like is like you well, disagree okay. with me as a person and not anything that oh. I'm actually advocating. No, okay. come on, you know, okay. you know, I, you know, I love you, Demon you got, Mama. You got, you wait, wait, I'm time. not saying like as a whole. I'm saying in the context of this panel. I know you. I know you're not an asshole. Like I'm just saying that like you okay. question me. So okay, what do you okay. disagree with me then? Okay, so my, my my initial point was that four thousand nine hundred and ninety nine drugs never make it past uh, human testing to make it to market. And I think that's a shitty way to use tax money. Tax money should be used in things that we can clearly fucking uh, point to it. Like there's so many other problems and there's only a limited amount of budget that can be used. So that's all, that's all I so said. Like, and then so, when so I like said more, that, you made a weird face. Yeah, so a more, a more formal declaration of this. So something that governments historically have problems with are picking winners and losers. Like it's a, it's a problem with a lot of like more public funded models is that like in a, in a private system, like capital can respond like much more quickly to like winning and losing situations. But on a public model, trying to pick out like which medications are gonna be the winners is not going to be very effective. Um, you know, like we might say here like, oh, well privately, there's not gonna be much incentive to solve uh, for rare diseases. There's probably a greater chance that a rare disease is going to be cured in a private market because some, you know, like philanthropist makes it their pet project, then us voting like democratically or having like a medical institution that's throwing yeah, tons and tons of, that. excuse, excuse me, um, please let me finish. And no, I'm not just asserting that. This is just common sense for how markets work, right? So what you can make all the dumb okay, like hand sense. things okay, you want. Sure. Um, well, so I can explain like the actual incentives for you, right? Sure, so please. publicly, if we, yeah, sure. So publicly, if we are trying to throw money at all of these potential research projects, because we're trying to figure out which drugs or potential drugs we want to fund, we're probably not going to be voting to do this for the rarest conditions, right? If we imagine that the majority of us are voting and the majority of us have a stake in how this public funding goes, we're probably actually going to be even more driven towards solving Solving the biggest diseases. So like 99% of our money is going to go towards things like diabetes or things related to dementia and Alzheimer's or things that are related mm -hmm. to obesity. Like this is where all of our public funding is going to go. In a private system, you have like a higher chance of riskier drugs being explored because somebody thinks there might be some money to be made if they find it or from some philanthropist picking a pet project and then lending money towards people to go and solve that particular thing.
Um, oh. there's some yeah. things that I think that you're you're correct about in that, and some things that I think you're not correct about. I don't I don't agree with the idea that like a a public system would necessarily be worse. I think that we don't have the infrastructure for it right now because we've relied on a on a private system. But a public system absolutely could How? identify what is neat. Hold on a second. Well, like. There's a number of ways. First of all, like we have we have other similar structures of this, such as like how we handle agriculture, right? Like people don't vote directly um, on on like what agricultural rules and what e e ecological like decisions are made by the EPA. I, I just want to I want to stop you right now because agriculture is the worst example you could bring up because we actually throw away so much money into ag because I, we produce farm goods yes. that are just thrown right away. Like if you look at the whole thing, we're with not field, talking about the specifics. We, no, no, but it's the it is literally the example that I would bring up to win my argument. Look at how much money we throw away in agriculture you're and not, corn you're, you're, because we you're vote you're on what crops really we should grow. About I'm not angry at all. Point. I'm just helping you with your argument. So it, go ahead and continue. I don't need any help because you clearly do because. Because you brought not, up an example for me. You're Go not ahead. talking. Uh, you're not even touching on the same thing that I'm talking about. It's like really weird. You know, it feels really weird. It feels like there's like this this weird thing. Where Dylan, you can we make a rule where Demon Mama can't just talk about how mad people are? Because it's like the biggest waste wait, of time. There's like nine I, people here that want to talk. I, I, okay, let's stop. Okay. Can you can okay. you please, can you make okay. a rule to not do wait, this? Wait. Okay. Okay. If there's any if there's any rule I have made is that when I talk, no one else talks. Okay. So you hear that? You don't hear anything. That's because. All of you in, in this room, the two brain cells that are in your head have yet to bang into each other. And when they do hit, it's going to sound like a pin dropping, okay? That's the current state I'm in. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to give you both 20 seconds to say something. And then we're going to throw it to basically the room. Uh, and if it's interesting enough, I'll let it go on. If it isn't, then I'm just going to give it to somebody else, okay? That's how we're doing this. Do you mommy got 20 seconds? Okay, 20 seconds. Uh, yeah, look, there are all kinds of structures, some of them flawed, some of them not. But we can we can institutionalize these things. They don't have to be voted on directly. They can be done by appointees in other institutions. That's that's all I'm saying. All right, I'm going to jump since you said it would be it open was, to the floor. Oh, can wait, I just said, respond? Oh, sorry, yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, so I don't know if we just there's don't know. The, there's I, the brain cell. Yeah, okay, so real quick. The other one. So done by appointees means that it's still ultimately an appointee of a publicly elected figure. If the issue becomes a hot button enough topic, then of course these are going to become like issues that we are going to be indirectly voting on, just like we indirectly vote on like our you know presidential cabinet and the heads of our EPA and all those other things. Um, agriculture, I just thought that was a funny thing to bring up because it's a good example of how government tries to pick and choose which crops are grown. We see huge issues going on with that in the United States when it comes to throwing away tons of money on corn because it's electorally popular to quote unquote support our farmers. So we like misallocate resources there. You see it happening in India, which we kind of were talking about earlier. In East India, a fuck ton of subsidization goes towards growing rice that's essentially thrown out into the trash can as well. Um, I, I think that some of these things are just better done on a private model. And I think that like the hi history shows that. Okay, elbows thrown. Okay, yes. Okay, so the the this is where uh, I think I can play the enlightened centrist and answer both of your questions simultaneously. That you can marry both of these interests. So I, I think it's kind of silly to think that the private market doesn't have some advantages and the public market doesn't have some advantages. One of the uh, one of the examples I would bring up is the military industrial complex. Uh, just like agriculture, it's an example in which billions or potentially trillions of dollars are thrown away on pet projects that don't necessarily yield immediate commercial products or immediate products that are benefit uh, beneficial to the nation. And yet we consistently do it because the public good is viewed as necessary um, and is so overwhelming that we should have an advanced military that it's worth it uh, to, to throw billions or trillions of dollars away on this public good uh, because it's just that necessary. Um, I would also argue that agriculture falls into a similar category for this uh, because agriculture is basically food security. If there's one thing that we all fucking need, it's food security because tomorrow, if uh, you know, basically the grocery stores didn't have any food on the shelves, then uh, I'm pretty sure 70% of the people in this room would starve within two weeks uh, to death. So there's advantages to both the public research model, the private research model. The point is to hybridize these things. And I would argue that specifically when we're talking about COVID, uh, COVID is such a public issue that public funding, maybe that large cash transfer to these private corporations should be done for the benefit of the globe. The faster that we get these things produced, the faster that everybody is inoculated, the faster the global economy opens back up, the faster the global economy opens back up, the more we can go back to work and then basically return to some semblance of normal yield. So uh, I wanted to add in here, this is, this can be my little diet dunk on Destiny because I think you forgot to mention, like when he said something earlier about the research being publicly funded, like in contests of Demon Mama, a, a lot, of, if not most of the, the research that was done on like CRISPR, the RNA, the SARS and all that stuff was off of the, like all the, the research that those companies did individually was off the back of 
like publicly funded research that was done through like universities, et cetera. So like we uh, we do benefit a lot from the from the research that we choose to invest in already. So like I I don't know what more. I mean, I think it is probably better to have these in the private sector where these these they can fine tune all these things, where they can manipulate the CRISPR and the RNA stuff to be able to to make something like the, the Moderna virus. And then also, I just wanted to add in from er earlier, like because you were saying something about that this brand new technology should be shared so that everybody can like we barely understand this already. So th the fact that we would just spread it to, to other countries and just allow them to like start toying with all with this virus and try to create and potentially create some like mutant version that would just spread throughout the rest of the planet and fuck us even more. is like kind of mind boggling. Like, I, I think we want to like keep this under wraps for now, like and maybe in the future we could look into like if sharing I can the respond to that specific point, which was responding to, to mine. Like, okay. uh, I think that there's there's an assumption that's being baked in here which is that like that we're the only ones who know anything about it we're not there are skilled ingenious doctors all over the globe that by opening this up we may be able to identify and i'm not saying just like literally take a gun and just fire out incomplete like this is i don't know i feel like we can't get like an actual like reasonable discussion about it but what like there are scientists all over the world who can contribute to this who could help make it better the, the vaccines could be made better because there's more eyes on it. There's more intelligence. There's there's entire countries worth of skilled, studied people who could contribute to this. I think that that like this is a better approach towards medicine in general. Um, and and so I just wanted to respond to that. I'm not saying that like like the idea that like that like America's the only people who could have ever made a breakthrough on any virus or vaccine ever is just not true. In fact, I mean we are we're known for doctors coming over and contributing to us from overseas like that's a, a matter of our economic power not that we're just like like by virtue of being born in america brain geniuses no there's like there's lots of smart people all over the place who could contribute Except to this me. and it is a world problem so just on, on top of this so there's just there's so many misconceptions you about how any I'll of this you next. Okay, yeah there's thanks. so many misconceptions about how many so first of all this idea that like there are all these people around the world that could contribute um probably not uh there were other massive pharmaceutical companies that were trying to get vaccines to work and people don't realize how many of these other massive pharmaceutical companies failed the idea that there are all these doctors around the world that's like oh well if you just show me the machine you know like maybe i can chime in with my brilliant piece of code like like I'm in, you know, like some hackers movie or whatever. It's just not the case. Like we already have like the best people in the world that are in the position to work on this are not only working at this, they're working at it at capacity. Also, just to address, I hear this said a lot. Um, American Nacho brought this up. A lot of people will say things like the majority of uh, medical research is publicly funded, blah, 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 blah. We do not publicly fund treatments or therapies. That is not true. There is a lot of general research that happens, but taking that, gen that general research doesn't help cure you. It doesn't cure you. You don't, you don't go to a hospital and get general research. You don't go to a hospital and get like something that, you know, like you, you need a, you need an actual therapy or treatment. And these are privately funded. And the big money sink that comes into funding these goes into all of the trialing that happens to get a drug from the general research ideas and principles that we establish at universities into an actual therapy that we can administer to somebody that has an acceptable number of side effects for an acceptable number of people that actually treats the disease that it purports to treat. And that entire process in the United States, at least, is privately funded and it is incredibly expensive it is incredibly arduous it is incredibly risky there aren't all these pharmaceuticals that make billions and billions of dollars and blah 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 you can go and look through the stock histories of any of these companies you can go and see how many of them start and how many of them fail um, the idea that like this is just some incredibly lucrative industry that all these people are becoming billionaires off of is not true again and to reiterate there are plenty of huge pharmaceuticals that tried to make vaccines for this and they failed there are not a Destiny, ton of people quick. around the world that know how to do this stuff yeah, so if I quick question. No, that's a very serious I, question right now. What, I, just I was very quick question. Both, I, I just got something. Wait, 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 so was okay. I? Oh, with that. Oh man, that's the smartest thing I heard all day. Nothing. Okay. So, what we're I gonna do quick. is, it's quick. I bet it will be the smartest thing I heard all day. It will be. And, believe me. Well, you know what? I wanted to point something out to you Nacho. Five you got five seconds. So five. Nacho, a minute ago when you iterated that like uh, the the little mini dunk on on Destiny. That was great. That anyway, was, back over was to the fucking no, Smackdown no, from the no, attempted. No. That's what happened. So no, that's yeah. CTV, okay. I'm gonna do something. I'm very disappointed. You've got a five minute timeout. I'm sorry, my guy. Five seconds is five seconds, not eight seconds. What a tragedy. Another conservative censored by the liberal elites. 
I'll give you a loan to meet you in five minutes, okay? Okay, so Demon Mama, can you do the five second rule knowing the consequences yeah, of the five second rule? Uh, okay, five Destiny seconds. Or Destiny or anyone else on the panel, where was the first vaccine successfully developed? Tell me the country. I would love to know. Um, I mean, I, I mean the U.S. slash Germany, right? I think Russia. I think it, it, Germany. Germany. I think it was Germany. Sputnik. It was Sputnik in Russia. Well, argue. Oh, perhaps. Well. perhaps it was Russia then. But regardless, it wasn't here. <laughs> but it okay. was with it was the with the partnership that, the of an American that we're company. The only ones with the brains is just so American centric. It's, it's not American centric. The problem is you don't understand supply ridiculous. chains for companies. You think that just because a supply chain is located in another country, that somehow that country owns that intellectual property, or somehow that country is the ownership of the production of the vaccine? The, you just I'm don't sorry, understand the issue of what's being discussed. That's not, like that's even not true. You're, you're, so, you're so Bi BioNTech works in partnership with Pfizer, and these were the two people that right. jointly came up with the vaccine. But like BioNTech well, didn't come up with themselves. Why do they need Pfizer? And where their scientists working? Huh? You're saying that this is a supply line problem? It's not a supply this line is, problem. You're talking we're about not research. In the, You're flying all over the place about things that are unrelated. Keep on point. I mean, if anybody wants to go read my Twitter, I post a lot of stuff for people that know a lot about vaccine manufacturing. You can yeah, go read go, about go it, go but like, it's not, it's not, it's, this, uh, it's, it's not a matter of just like flying somebody around and then showing you on the computer what buttons to punch in to get the magical I'm, vaccines I'm right. to pop Source, out. But, my Twitter uh, page, please go to my Twitter page. You mean Destiny's friend? Right. Okay, okay. So it was Heemed. Thank so you. I'm gonna throw it to Heemed. Thank you. Okay, so I, as someone who is currently taking part in public research, I, I think I understand pretty well the dynamics between public and private research. I am a PhD candidate. I make $4 less than minimum wage. I would never go into becoming a PhD scientist if I didn't know that I'm going to have future earnings as a possibility. The reason that uh, public funding of research is the way it is is because they take advantage of, of, of people like me because th there's just not that much budget. They'd rather give two PhDs $28,000 a year instead of giving one PhD fifty thousand dollars a year so part of the reason why this and, and the research that i'm doing which is noble it's fucking fantastic it'll contribute to the greater uh it'll contribute to the greater knowledge of science none of it will be practiced on patients because to practice it on patients requires so much money and so much uh resources that that like public funding just doesn't have mm. okay, okay. So, uh, uh, CDV has been let out early on good behavior and on, uh, being white. So we're going to throw it first to, uh, <laughs> Demon Mama. Can I uh, respond to... Sure. Yeah. If it was it something made directly to you? Yeah, because there's something yeah, that okay. Destiny sure. said that... Boy, I, there I is nothing clarify. like being mis... mis what, okay, what is cool. it when... So, so it's not misgendering, obviously, but it's myth mis... Uh, like, Let the Nacho like, guy talk. Why did we cut Nacho off for this? Oh my Come god. On, let's go, can we, let's go, let's let go the, Nacho. Look Come at on. this guy. Hold on, Nacho. I'm getting some damn Florida sun down here, right? Like, it's just getting darker, yes, right? Yes, Matter of fact, yes. yesterday I had somebody walk up to me and just start speaking Spanish. I want, to, I, I, right? I want everybody, everybody to ask you about fuck? all the great questions during Black History Month, and you are the M MLK of our time, but we're going to Nacho right now, okay? Yeah, I thought I was going to have to pull on POC card. Uh, so... I just wanted to clarify the point that that I was making uh, that that Destiny like touched on earlier, uh, in that I I know that the the research, I want to clarify that the the research that the the pharmaceutical companies do and like their end product and all the stuff that they do with it and like they lose a ton of money and, and take a lot of risk etc. Like but their the base research that they're building off of is publicly funded sure. now then when they take that research when they take like the CRISPR and they take the other things like uh, they lose a lot of money investing like just like you pointed out that um there were a lot of other companies trying to make vaccines and they lost out on it like a company could go bankrupt trying to find the next cure to whatever like cancer etc but they're doing it off of the back generally most of the time they're doing it off the back of some kind of like publicly funded research so i think yeah, our i don't know just to try to say that like our i was even bringing that up just to say that i think what we do with our public funding right now generally is pretty damn good and the fact that the private companies are going to take all the risk um in doing this research is probably an, a net benefit for all of us. Demon Mama. Yeah, okay, so there's a couple of issues. Like, the, the, the fact- So wait, one second. I need to use a bathroom desperately. Please, nobody break the rules while I'm gone. I'll be right back. Okay. So, public funding being short and, and, uh, and 
and being it's like a huge like that's a huge problem that i agree with like like we we have a notorious problem in the u.s of creating our own problems with funding basically what happens is republicans get in office they cut public funding to research they cut public funding to health whatever and then when when the, when and then when it when it starts getting worse they go look at how bad it is and then they justify that to cut further funding this is like a, a known political topic like we I know most everyone here has talked about this in the past when it's not having to do with whether it agrees with you in this particular context. Um, the fact that your experience with public funding is bad, like I agree, like I would agree with you. I think we should give more public funding. We should f make these processes more efficient and we should rely less on corporate interests that are extremely, extremely profit driven. And while I agree that the private industry can sometimes or uh, like when private industries can sometimes respond faster, a lot of that is because they have no, um, they have no other uh, responsibility aside from making money. So they can dump an entire team of people who've been doing research. All that can go in the trash if they want it to, as long as they're making more money. And there are in our in our currently existing system, there aren't really like that doesn't quite exist for the public eye. But there's nothing to say that we can't build ourselves a a a a public investment structure that also says, hey, if we need to move quickly, if something is failing and it's sucking up a lot of resources, we can cut this thing. And and that would kill two birds with one stone. One, it would make our public, uh, our public structures more efficient. And secondly, it would cut out the profit incentive, which is a huge issue in pharmaceuticals. And there it doesn't matter the failure rate of small of mom and pop pharmaceutical manufacturers. The fact of the of reality is that there are massive multinational, multi-billion dollar um, industries that do indeed have a profit incentive in what they choose to research. This is an issue with rare forms of cancer that are unable to get any sort of attention because there is no backup. So those things are very serious. To, uh, so how would you talk. pick like, what, so like, let's say a company. So like if we had a publicly funded company, would you say like what? So they're losing money for five years, 10 years, then we just stop publicly funding them? Well, no, I mean, if you're talking about, I'm not talking about a publicly funded company. Let's say that we expand the CDC and we have various. Uh, no, but how do you pick a, and choose what research gets researched? Wait, we already wait, do this. Do, we, we are. Wait, we no, we no, no. For drugs, hey, you want to do this for hold drugs, hold on, not general hold research. On, hold, how do you do it for drugs? Second. Hold on a second. We can. We already do this in other publicly funded things. We can structure it to be better. You use the scientific method to identify which of these are. Wh what are the statistics? What's the likelihood of success? Are we going to have a failure on this? Okay. Yeah. Obviously, no, it's a complicated this process. This but, doesn't. But, but wait a minute. Wait, wait, hold on a second. Money. What, what we does, do? Wait a second. It already costs money. It's but just. But the costing, private companies wait, are taking it. Stop. I know. I I get it. I promise you. You don't need to. Like holy shit. Yes, the private companies, they both get to benefit from it. They make a lot of money from it and they take those risks. Now, if we say, hold on a second, we recognize that a medicine is a public good that we probably shouldn't have built into the profit motive. You say, okay, here's what we allot for funds. And we use the scientific method as as companies do internally. Please, please stop saying the scientific method. You're, you're killing me. They also, wait, wait, what, what do they you also mean? pay for a lot. You're, you're actually killing me. Is, Just please stop what, saying what, that phrase. The scientific No, no, I'm not. You like, this is so you know, fucking dumb. Great, Scott, we figured like it out. The scientific method. Okay. Okay. Ooh, that was real close too for the second person. Okay, Dima Mama, please finish your point. Thank God. Like what I'm talking about is there are all kinds. Out. Okay, there are all kinds of ways. Like I mean, listen, I, I I don't work for a research company, but listen, I know for a fact, and I know D Dr. Heem can't can't look at me in the, the straight face and say that there aren't already existing peer review methods that are sometimes enforced privately, sometimes enforced publicly. There's a hybrid of these, that it, which allows us to determine the validity, the success rate of various things. If you make that a public a, a public enterprise with the goal of being the public good, you you take out the profit incentive, but the government maintains it. The people involved in it maintain their incentives they're still being paid because the government would be able to fund it better the government has the has the goal of generating medicines that will help the most people possible there's just not a profit incentive for private interests now are there potential roadblocks in that yeah i'm sure there are there's all kinds of things that nitty-gritty that we'll have to figure out but removing that profit incentive is really really big and the benefit that you get back that the people who are doing the investment, the people who are doing the research, they get paid well with a nice public job and the public gains the benefit of reliably getting resources uh, or, or, or vaccines or medicines that will help them. That's the payoff. 
And in the long run, the government, the nation, the society, the planet gets the benefit of not having people die, which as it turns out, people being sick and dying is super, super expensive. It's just an abstracted economic value. And I, we know for a fact that companies and governments alike already calculate to some degree um, like the impact of diseases and downtime and deaths on their economy. We can just do this as well, but adjust our calculations so that we figure out what the actual value of producing these vaccines are, of producing these medicines are for the public. Okay, so who wants to respond to that? I, I know Counter uh, I got does. It. I got it. Okay, anyone, okay, Counter. Yeah, so, okay, so you guys are talking past each other a little bit. I've already brought it up. It's fine. That's because I don't have a capitalist jerk-off or a socialist jerk-off impulse. So we already do this. We do this just with the normal jerk-off. Yeah, just we, I have normal masturbatory impulses, okay? Um, so my normal masturbatory impulses are telling me that we already do this. We do this with the military, military industrial complex. And there's actually a really great quote that I fucking hate. Um, and it's basically the world will not know peace until the money dedicated towards weaponry is dedicated towards livingry. I hate this quote because I'm not a fucking hippie, but it's a great goddamn quote. So basically what you can do, because I, I worked in logistics, so I understand the military industrial complex is you have a certain amount of R&D budget that rotates throughout the year. You hire a bunch of private entities that know that they're gonna get a minimum contract. These companies you already know, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, Pratt & Whitney, a whole bunch of mega corporations who can count on the United States government for billions of dollars every single year, and they know that their engineers and their employees and their administrators and all that kind of stuff are gonna be employed year after year after year after year. Those people make not phenomenal salaries. They're not making do they're not making like uh, you know doctor salaries, but they are making living salaries. And on top of that, they will grow and shrink in response to actual conflict. So there is a certain amount of the population that is on the chopping block. Now there's problems that Destiny alluded to, which is basically waste. There is a fuckload of waste. So uh, the F-35, I want to say over its like 10-year lifespan, is going to end up costing trillions of dollars. Um, I want to say that they spent like 1.3 billion just developing a helmet. But at the same time, these R&D projects are going to pay off in the future because they're already building augmented reality off of the $1.3 billion helmet. And they're also building the next generation of stealth fighters. Uh, those are probably the UFOs that you see in the sky right now. So the, all of this being said, these massive public investments do pay off long term. And just because they're wasted doesn't mean they're wasted. Uh, final point before I yield. Uh, so, for instance, we brought up how inefficient our agricultural systems are. They are inefficient. But as a result, everybody inside the United States of America America, except for two weeks during the COVID scare, basically knew they know that their grocery store will be stocked. Barring some weird natural disaster, they will have food access. There are some public benefits that outweigh, uh, you know, basically private interest. And I would say de um, destroying a deadly disease that has frozen the global economy is not just a public interest for the United States, it's a public interest for the world. So we can get into fucking nitty gritty about fucking logistics, research, mRNA versus what, whatever, but basically that's the North Star. And you could basically create a health industrial complex the way you have a military industrial complex. Yield. I don't think anybody thinks there's anything wrong with public-private partnership. I think that the example that the U.S. sets is really, really, really positive of that. Um, yeah, I don't disagree. Okay. Okay, is... is well, then fuck you, Destiny. You're an asshole. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay. <laughs> so is that everything on this topic? Uh, CTV, uh, I know you're muted. Do you want to say anything or anybody else want to say anything? Or are we done with this topic? I'm okay with I'm just glad on. that the U.S., with all its evil profit incentives and everything, you know, managed to develop a lot of these vaccines that are going out to the world right now. And, uh, yeah, I think that's really cool. Keep it up. Keep okay. up the great work, evil Look, pharmaceuticals. Okay. Is, okay, we're going to do quick ending statements, uh, go around the room, and then we'll go into the last topic. Okay. Uh, Heem, we're going to start with you. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I think... Keep it under a minute. Yeah, I think my stance has been pretty clear. Uh, I, I fucking want the vaccine to be given to the as many people as possible, but I think... It's not important to just get vaccines. It's important to get vaccines that are safe. Uh, I don't want to cut any sort of um, corners when it comes to safety. And I don't see how waiving the IP would like tomorrow. Today, we waive the IP. Tomorrow, we 10x our manufacturing or anything of the sort. I don't see how it would improve or increase the speed anyway. And it seems to be the case. And, and, and we never really got to discussing this that every factory that has the capability of producing the vaccine is getting licensed. The vaccine. I don't understand why 
uh, people think that like, I don't know, I guess I just don't understand why the pharma corpse wouldn't want to be first to market in every single country. It's not like there's a monopoly on the vaccine and only one company is creating it. There's a competition right now with multiple different companies trying to race to get be the first one so they can, like you said, make the most money. I don't think that's a, that, that, that there's anything wrong with that. And I don't think that publicly funded uh, uh, medicine, just like research, I, I'm for universal health care, but I don't think publicly funded uh, pharmaceuticals is necessarily going to work ever. Okay. And that's my that's my closing statement. Demon Mama? Sure. Um, well, I'm, I'm really actually very pleased with how this topic went because um, by the end of it, everybody agreed with basically literally exactly what I said at the beginning. Um, which is that we should help as much as we can. Um, uh, I don't really know. I can go back and forth on the IP thing. That's neither here nor there. We should do what we can to help. And I do believe that taking a proactive approach towards this will help us fight against um, future uh, future pandemics in the future. You know, maybe maybe you're maybe Heem is right. Maybe if we didn't pat, uh, you know, maybe if we didn't, you know, unpatent the polio vaccine, we'd be in a perfect position right now too. But there's always the possibility that somebody scoops up that patent and is really malicious with it. I don't think we should have a profit incentive involved in something where the global health incentive is at potential opposites to the to the to the. Uh, profit incentive. We should just get the profit incentive out of it and focus on the thing that matters, which is the global health incentive. And the way that you do that is by offering aid, being uh, being communicative, getting as many experts as we can, like the ingenious people in Russia who invented a vaccine, like the ingenious German scientists who invented a vaccine, like the ingenious other scientists around the world who don't happen to be American, but also have big brains. As it turns out, you don't have to be American to be smart. So yeah, uh, let's do that. Shaved. Um, I might take a little longer than a minute. I've been incredibly quiet. Um, I, coming at this from a more, like, person who really hates intellectual property law and thinks it's super cringe, um, I don't think intellectual property laws are, like, the biggest, like, even a significant barrier to, like, getting vaccines out around the world. Destiny brought up that, like, already there's incredible shortages in the market on labor supply as well as just, like, manufacturing capabilities or, like, um, actual machines to to make these things um and like i could see that ip laws as they are could be used to ensure equality for all of those in some regard um an alternative to that um ip law historically to me has been exclusively used to establish some pretty cringe market monopolies starting with like thomas edison in the film industry he was able to like go as so far to like hire goons to beat up other people who are infringing on his intellectual property rights. that was done like entirely at the behest of the state so like these kind of laws inherently benefit these established market players and they can use it to like continue their hold on the like section of the economy thankfully they're able to escape that and go to california but then again they just kind of did the exact same thing edison did they established their own monopoly and everything that being said this was originally about helping india and we should do as much as we can um the first thing at least with intellectual property laws we should spend suspend all ip around um our like Am american cable networks um and so we can provide all of india with the like 200 plus channels of tv doctors so that they can get really good and healthy like us americans here yeah okay next is going to be eris Um, I'm just, you know, I, same thing, what I said earlier, like, I just think it's, uh, we need to help out India and we need to kind of get out of this, like, you know, my nation first concept because everything, you know, there's dominant effect, everything eventually affects us like, uh, eventually. And also America should help, uh, you know, it's neighbor Canada a little bit because we're also struggling, you know, not at the level India is, but, um, yeah, we're having a really hard time as well, but, uh, yeah, that's it. I'm excited for the next topic. Okay, now I'm gonna throw it over to Nacho. Yeah, I think uh, I think America should probably help as many people as we can um, with the with the with the vaccinations uh, because I think it's in our best interest generally. I mean, it, we don't want this thing spreading around the globe. We have uh, two different strains already uh, popping up in India specifically. So if the question, which the original question was, should we help India? I think we should help them. But if it's like, uh, should we? remove all the barriers around a brand new technology that we just learned how to use ourselves. Uh, I think that would be uh, more dangerous than it would uh, helpful. Um, that's, that's it. I yield. Okay. Now it's going to be counterpoints. 
Yeah, so um, I think the main thing that I wanted to drive home was just the uh, public-private balance. Uh, we do have a military-industrial complex. It's oftentimes criticized. It's inefficient. It's bloated. It's wasteful, all that kind of stuff. That being said, it develops incredible technology. Um, I wouldn't mind a health-industrial complex being com uh, you know, uh, being created. I think it's uh, fucked up that Dr. Heem has to work for $4 an hour in order to develop you know, research that ends up benefiting the globe. Um, I wish you well on that. I hope that uh, by the time you're in your 40s, you can basically buy $3,000 wine, have a $3,000 wine monthly budget because uh, you deserve it buddy Thank you. Uh, but the uh, so health industrial complex was my main takeaway um, and then I just want to say efficiency isn't our only metric um, so there are public goods that have to be balanced against efficiency the market is incredibly good um, at being efficient but also the problem with efficiency is there's a lack of redundancy uh, one of the things that scared the shit out of me when it came to COVID uh, was basically seeing the food supply lines kind of uh, buckle for a few weeks. Um, also them talking about a meat shortage, uh, probably six months into the pandemic. Um, we need to realize that uh, redundancy and security when it comes to basic human mean, uh, needs might be a good thing. Um, and we shouldn't use efficiency or the market for all of the things. Um, I understand Dr. Heem's concern that if we just roll out uh, co uh, like uh, vaccines or the mRNA specifically, we could create some nasty super bugs that wipe out the planet and then maybe we get zombies or some shit. Um, I think we do need to balance that concern out and maybe not like, you know, uh, sell the, or open the mRNA vaccine to a meth lab in the Philippines. Um, but that being said, I do think we need to uh, basically consider like the global impact of deadly diseases and how we attack it as a global community. Because since we are in a global economy, any disease that fucks over vast markets like India or China uh, ultimately fuck us as well. Also, uh, when it comes to this topic in particular, America first, fuck Canada, except for Lehman and Eris. Yield. Wait, I'm Canadian too. Oh, uh, and, and Dr. Heemt. Uh, every other Canadian can suck it. Okay. Thanks. Destiny? Um, yeah, we should obviously do what we can to help India recover from its unbelievably monumental fuck-ups, um, which is causing a whole bunch of problems around India right now, maybe around the world in the future. Um, whatever that looks like, um, if that's like shipping them more vaccines, if it's selling it to them at cost or giving them for free, um, I think it's in all of our like best interest to do what we can to help India overcome the uh, virus. And CTV? Yeah, I think that uh, I think that at this point, right, um, we should probably just look at getting India added as a state of the United States, right? Let's just put it up to a nice. vote, have them vote to be a part of the union, and let's just kind of roll from there, right? We've got a whole lot of geopolitical things to consider in the area. We could set up some military bases right there on China's doorstep. You know, there's a lot of things that could be done, right, on U.S. soil, right? So I don't know, maybe uh, maybe we two birds, one stone. I mean, two birds, one stone. Based. Great. So we're going to go into the last topic, which is should Twitch moderate hot tub streams? Um, yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. What should our policy around hot tub streams be? Is it consistent? What should we do about them? Uh, Squad W, uh, we're going to start in the top left-hand corner with Eamd. Okay. Uh, this is a really interesting topic. Um, honestly, it's not something that I've, it's definitely not something I've spent as much time on like I have with the vaccine patent. I've spent a way more time uh, digging into the nitty gritty of that. But I will say just, and I'm looking forward to hearing everyone's answers. Wait. Everyone to play games. Or if you're going to have a just chatting section, you kind of are opening the Pandora's box to all kinds of uh, things. I think as long as um, people are not like showing titty, like nipple or like anything crazy like that, I really don't see how you can draw a line and, and judge it. Also, the people who watch those streams typically are not going to be watching my streams anyways. I don't feel like we're in any sort of competition. So good for them. Make racks. With Rex. Demon Mama? <laughs> so I did a lot of, um, I did a lot of, uh, of research in preparation for this topic. And I, I have to say, um, there is truth in the idea, at least as far as I can tell, that there's not a whole lot of overlap between these channels and other channels on Twitch, which perhaps that's its own, its own problem in and of itself. But there, there's been a lot of talk about the hot tub meta and all of this, all of these problems. I, Honestly, uh, I would really hope they don't get rid of the just chatting um, segment. That would be very sad. That's one of my concerns. I think that just chatting is fantastic um, and has brought a lot of attention um, to the platform. There are some issues, I think, um, but a lot of those come, in my mind, uh, as a result of the TOS being very, very unclear um, and 
clarifying or or at least making uh, more structured the TOS would probably help with most of the issues. Um, with regard to analytics, like the number one largest hot tub uh, streamer um, is is like not even on the top 100 list by view by like average view count um by some metrics um like usually uh uh what are they called um compounded metrics based on all uh like follower count gain new followers etc cetera, etc cetera. amaranth is like 42nd on the list of the top 100 uh streams that are on the rise but that's completely varies from site to site based on how they choose to compound their analytics what, what I'm basically saying is there's not really a major threat to anybody with this. And while some people might be irked by it or whatever, I don't really think it's like a major threat. I think the biggest issue is that uh, Twitch just needs to uh, refine and clarify their TOS. And I would say this in multiple aspects, by the way, not just with regard to their policies on nudity and clothing, but also with regard to their um, hate speech policies, with regard to their, um, you know, violent and, and, and protest coverage. There's a lot of uh, policies on the site that are really unclear and it leads to a very unfair feeling uh, enforcement situation on Twitch, in my opinion. Shaved? Um, I don't want to say that nobody actually gives a fuck about them being hot tub streams, but I, I mean, there is some concern for it and care for it, but ultimately it's exactly as it's already laid out. Um, I think I mentioned it earlier with Facebook, at least. These are we, we are still in our technological infancy when it comes to the internet. We've made a lot of progress, but when it comes to governing a, what is essentially a stateless society of a couple million people online, we haven't like quite developed the right amount of moderation systems when it comes to like what we qualitatively judge. Um, I think largely Twitch um, needs to move to like a more public and codified moderation system where they can make public rulings and like point to evidence in the past on why they chose things or the otherwise. Um, and like maybe even have users like input on it in some degree. I don't know. Um, I think that might lead to more brigading and whatnot, but, um, yeah, I think the only other concern that could come up is like, um, it being what is essentially soft core porn and accessible to like other uh, individuals on the site who aren't of age and might not be uh, like shouldn't be seeing that content or having easy access to that content. But I think we take a lot of steps to minimize that anyway. Um, and we could do more. Yeah. Eris. Um, okay. Just one second. Um, da -da -da. Sorry. Okay, so I'm actually a hot tub streamer, right? <laughs> um, but anyways, the I think just in general, it, the issue is not like the hot tub, right? Um, the issue is, um, you know, the reason why people are using the hot tub, which is to get around Twitch's rules, um, you know, being and be sexual, which like being sexual. And like, we all know that people are breaking the rules. Like, we all know that you know, the content is sexualized, like whatsoever. Um, I mean, I, I'm not technically, even though I'm, you know, right now I'm in a hot tub, I wouldn't be counted as being a hot tub streamer because I'm not like, you know, in a in a bikini. So what people really have a problem with are women in bikinis. Um, the And while I can understand the feminist arguments about that, I also understand the consequences of um, what amounts to basically, uh, you know, a sexualized woman's body being like the most profitable way to be a woman um, on this platform, which is true and it sucks. Um, it sucks for those of us who are not comfortable doing that for whatever reason. Um, and I'm sorry, my audience likes bouncing the ball in my hot tub. Um, but, uh, and like, and also Twitch just needs to start realizing like what kind of content they wanna support on their stream um, in, uh, like on their platform in general right now it really feels um like they don't mind profiting off of like sexual stuff they don't mind profiting off of um uh you know death threats or toxicity or streamers being incredibly cruel to one another like there's so many problems in general um on twitch and i just wish that they were more strict in general um but it is a uh, kind of like a family 
you know, it's supposed to be family friendly. It's supposed to be available to kids. And there is like an issue initially when I first, I was first like totally fine with, you know, the hot tub streamers and everything. Um, but then when I started looking into it and I looked into like the, the people who go into the hot tub streams, like they don't actually go into anyone else's streams. It's very rare. Um, they're not actually moving into, so it's not like they're increasing viewership for everyone else. Um, and I, I feel like that's actually kind of a bad thing because um, I think one of the biggest arguments like people like Amara had was that she was bringing in new people and then new people would come in and then move over to everyone else's streams too. And it was just like an overall kind of good for bringing more, um, more audience, more of a, an audience to it. Uh, and it just in general, like, I know it's kind of being kind of framed as like this women's rights thing. Uh, women can do whatever they're, what they want with their bodies and all that stuff. But you have to understand that like in a community, I, it's a Twitch is a community and anyone's actions have consequences to the overall community. So if like it becomes super profitable, um, to be wearing a bikini that, and you know, you're a woman who is not comfortable doing that for whatever reason, um, you're, you're actually still, it's not as simple as saying, Oh, like just do whatever you want with your body. It's like that person's kind of being kind of pressured, you know, there's a huge financial incentive, um, especially in this competitive atmosphere to, you know, show much more skin than they're comfortable with and all that stuff. Um, so I do think in general, it affects community. And I don't think it could just be dismissed as simply, oh, like you're just being sexist. You're telling women what they can and can't do with their bodies um, because it does affect, you know, not like other women as well. Um, it's just like a much more complex issue. Yeah, that's it. Okay. I'm going to throw it over to American Nacho. Uh, so I, I think uh, for me, it's more like, I don't really care. I don't have anything against uh, women doing what they want to do with their bodies, but uh, fuck hot tub streamers only because they're they're uh, messing with our platform. Okay, so it's like, it's not like uh, I care necessarily morally. It's more like if I go set up shop, if I gotta like run a spot at the at the local mall or whatever, or like the flea market, whatever it is, and I go rent a, a space there, right? And I'm doing business out of there, and like two doors down, uh, a, a a strip club moves in, and they they're gonna like host a couple strippers there right because it's no secret that that these uh these streams are meant to be a link to their only fans right okay so let's not pretend so they move in next door and then i i go and i i'm trying to give up my business card to people and i'm like hey yeah we're located my business is located down here in this mall or in this uh, flea market and they're like oh you mean the one with the strippers in it so like that's more what it is to me i don't really care how you make your money this is america like my the, the libertarian in me is like fuck it do what you want but the fact that like I'm trying to like uh, like do my thing on this platform, and this is where they want to come and like hang out to promote their OnlyFans, like it just seems kind of like dirty, I guess to me. It's like I have to tell my mom like, hey, yeah, come check me out on Twitch, and then when she makes a new account, like I've been on Twitch on a brand new account. My when I had to set up my wife for her brand new account for her to start streaming, these are the top promoted like three hot tub streamers in a row like at the top of the page, okay. And whether you click 18 and up or not, before you're even logged in, if you log out of Twitch, like these are the things that come up in the top. So, I mean, that, that's pretty much it for me. I yield. Okay. I think they recommend it based on your past viewings. <laughs> Get a what, if not, what if you're not logged in? <laughs> well, I think that uh, I think that this is probably going to be a similar argument to what we were having earlier, and it's already been hit the nail on the head with regards to moderation. It's not being very consistent, right? And it's just, you know, these attempts are obviously to skirt rules. So with all this all this in mind, right, we're actually, we just got through running a poll over here in the Wolf's Den, right? And it's confirmed, right? The pack wants to see CTV in a Speedo. I have no idea why, right? But the pack wants to see CTV in a Speedo. We're so apparently it. we're going to be doing some hot tub streams and some poolside streams, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, and and that's just, you know, we're just going to be doing it, right? I don't know. I don't know. I think that if the moderation was more consistent, then an idea like that would just obviously be laughed at completely. But since there's other people obviously doing it, it's like, well, it's like it's silly, but fucking go for it, right? So that's where the moderation not being consistent creates that dynamic. And uh, I don't know. We'll just kind of see where it goes, I guess. Okay. I'm going to throw it over to CounterPoints. 
Yeah, so uh, I definitely want Twitch to moderate this activity. Um, I think they should move it to an NSFW uh, category that way. P and I think it also should be restricted to 18 and up. It should be treated as softcore porn. I don't think it should necessarily be booted from the platform. If this is a, you know, uh, whatever, if this is how they make their money, that's cool. Um, you know, I love Tiggle Biddies as well. So that's sweet. Um, I just don't want, like, if my kid was 14 logging into Twitch, uh, watching his favorite, uh, you know, uh, streamer Destiny in his 50s, um, you know, then, uh, you know, 20 years from now, because my son is three. Um, so ba basically, if that were to happen, um, I would be concerned if the first thing that he uh, caught was uh, hot tub titty streamers riding bananas um, and then basically acting like they weren't being sexual. That being said, I do want this moderation and NSFW category to be uh, done maybe in about 60 to 90 days. Um, I'm currently at six and a half thousand subscribers on YouTube. Uh, once I break 10K, uh, CTV and I and all of the right wing uh, people who will join me, uh, we are going to buy either Speedos or Short Shorts. And uh, we are going to do a group conservative hot tub stream where you get to see our sweet dad bods and our banana hammocks. So once we do my inaugural Twitch stream, uh, that's very sexual, uh, then we can create the NSFW uh, category and then uh, then they could be, you know, moved to their own category still on the program, but age age conditioned yield. Destiny. Um, yeah, I think I agree. I think, uh, like, make a softcore porn category and then put it there. Um, there needs to be, like, a separate category so that advertisers aren't scared off from the platform, although just having that not safe for work associated with it, that might be enough to do it. Um, but, like, I mean, obviously, I, I don't think that pornographic content belongs on Twitch. Um, I love pornographic content. I just don't know if it's appropriate to, like, intermingle everything. And, I mean, that's clearly what's happening here, so. Um. Okay. Uh, Heem, do you, yeah. do you feel like a lot of people want to take it off? Take it freely. Okay, so there's a couple. It's the, the thing about sexualization is that it's kind of like a vague term, I guess. I have a beard cam on my stream. Okay, I literally have a cam that points to my beard, and sometimes I brush it. Is that sexualized content? Make can sure I ask? Can I, wait, can I ask a question for everybody on this Hold panel on in regards to that? Wait, wait. I have, a, I have a really big question. Does anybody okay. here agree? Wait, wait, what? wait, wait. Heem, are you okay with them doing that? Yeah, it's about it's about okay. what you just said. Okay. Sure. Go ahead. Does everybody here agree? I want to see a raise of hands. Who agrees that it's kind of blurry to figure out like what sexualized content is in regards to some of these hot tub streams? Can you can I see a show of hands yeah. for who thinks that? Okay. All of these people that have their hands up right now, keep them up, get them up there. Could you please keep your hand up if you would be comfortable if a 13 year old were to come onto Twitch and do an Amaranth bikini hot tub stream? No. But I can't. Uh, okay, so like, like that that's the issue. So I guess Demon Mom would be okay with literal children coming onto the platform and like riding around on like I bananas with bikinis and everything. To say but um, that particular content. Well, then why did you keep like your hand up? Were you what? saying viewing Wait, or were you I saying said, doing? I'm saying doing. I I'm saying I'm saying come on to Twitch and do a stream where you are riding a banana as a 13 year old in a scanty bikini where you can see tons of cleavage and tons of booty. 13 year old booty in this yeah. circumstance and, and yes so i think that's the so the re the, pr the reason why i bring this up as an analogy because i keep getting this weird argument where people are like lying to either themselves or anyone else They're like oh well it's not sexual content it's like okay if it's not sexual content then we should have no problems with like a 13 year old coming out of twitch and doing the exact same thing that amaranth or indie fox does no, right it is it is sexualized content for sure i think we can all agree it's just that like oh, where I exactly do you draw the line do you draw the line if a, sh a girl is showing cleavage do you mm, wherever you uh, draw you the line so hang on what, yeah, how do you compare how do you compare like uh, a good looking uh, person to not a good looking person like it, it just becomes so vague it's but I mean like in the okay, US courts wait, wait, it's... you could you could flip this around the same way right like there's a lot of ways that you could make something that would probably seem pretty weird if it was like a 13 year old like for example if like if somebody on on uh if, if, if some like dude on on twitch who's like really ripped uh tore off his shirt and this is allowed by TOS right now and just started doing a fucking dance like just shirtless ripped as fuck just doing a fucking dance you know what i mean just a dance that maybe is like vaguely sexual and then you said well why don't we put a, a 13 year old and have a 13 year old peel off his shirt and start to okay it starts getting really weird there are a lot uh, so of things i'm that I, I don't know if this is just me and me not being a pedophile but i would also be really weird seeing topless 13 year olds even if they were little boys yeah. dancing on twitch Both. that, yeah. Yeah. that, I, that yeah, might I be agree. now i admit Wait, i'm I a father so maybe i'm a little bit biased there but the idea of like my son in three years coming onto twitch and dancing topless that sounds really fucking weird to me 
me. So I don't know how right, that was supposed right. to be an example wait, of like wait, it's wait, so wait. ambiguous. I'm, no, no, I'm not. I'm not arguing against you, Destiny. Jesus, fuck. Well, but you, you just like, did. Uh, you said it was no, ambiguous. No, no, I, I agreed with you. Hmm. I'm 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 <laughs> augmenting your point by saying that we have a thing that is currently allowed Apparently, in TOS. Apparently, didn't agree with the augmentation. Wait, wait, wait. Well, that's fine. I, nobody asked you. Who asked? Any askers? No. Oh, I just um, told you that I didn't. I didn't yeah. require nobody, you nobody asking asked you. for no, me to tell you. you. Nobody asked you. Right? That's nobody how that you. fucking works. Go back to sleep. Go back to sleep. <laughs> Go back to sleep. All right. Now. Now that uh, you've been told, like, you I agree continue. With you. Wait, I agree with you that like there are issues with like sexualized content like this, but I think that there are like there. This is a deeper problem that goes deeper into the TOS because, like I said, like even if it, even if we agreed that like okay, the hot tub shit is um is like too much we have other rules that are currently in existence that would permit content that you yourself just said that you would be irked out by so how do you build a rule that says you know maybe 13 year olds shouldn't be taking their shirts off and dancing in front of uh a camera but also you do you see what i'm saying no, like, so like in the u.s courts like I'm we call in, in the u.s courts we call this we'll know it when we see it like i mean like it might be the case that down the road we run into some like very like on the line cases where you have a 14 year old girl that wants to do like a just dance stream and it's like uh, i don't know but we are like so far over that line it's not even a conversation that's worth entertaining right now like right now <laughs> yeah. on twitch we have softcore porn and i think that we need to like do something better to address it and like the weird like kind of tone police is like well you know what if in the future what if there's a 14 year old and they just happen to have really big boobs and they want to dance one time on stream and maybe they level like okay like yeah i agree that in the future maybe there are like going to be some edge cases where it's kind of but we already do that with any tos like you always have to make these kinds of value statements like what counts as like radical speech or what counts as a terrorist threat or what counts as a blah 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 like you're not gonna have a hard line on literally anything sexual content Destiny. is no different can i ask you a question what do, how do you feel about asmr streams in general and also <sighs> and so, before you answer that yeah. before you answer mm -hmm. that uh a lot of people brought up that uh these these girls are using this uh, as an opportunity to plug their only fans yep uh, we plug our Patreons, so what's That's the okay. difference? The difference is that you're not supposed to plug sexual content on Twitch. So like, mm -hmm. for instance, I can't link to my OnlyFans on Twitch but I can link to a link tree that has my own events, right? Like that's, it's kind of like, okay, well, it's not really like the spirit of the rule is being violated there. Okay, sure, so we don't actually have a problem with that? With what? Like, I'm asking, forget about the TOS, I'm asking like, how do you feel about, should, do you think that it's okay if, like, let's say, I'm just asking, do you think it's okay for, for them to plug their OnlyFans? No, I think that mixing, I don't think you should ha I don't think you can mix safe for work and not safe for work content. It's just really bad for advertising. Like every other platform figure this out. Like Tumblr figure this out. Um, fucking Imager figure this out, I think. Uh, I think Imager doesn't do it not safe for work content anymore, right? Like, a lot of, okay, and then yeah, if you could yeah, answer my ASMR. FFW. So the my ASMR, ASMR isn't, well, so believe it or not, Jesus, as somebody that has followed ASMR communities for so long. I don't, yeah, I, okay, I'm not I have, familiar. So ASMR wait, wait, hold on, wait. Destiny, we might have found some common ground because I also have followed ASMR communities for a very long time. Cool, then we, we probably know it. Heather it. Feather and the first Heather girl that Venny Vidi Vici yeah. girl oh, and the ASMR request. Lashes, classic. Yeah, so um, yeah. an ephemeral riff before he got really weird and sexist and like, Ooh, yeah. that's yeah. true he did. Yep. Uh, okay, so <laughs> the problem is that originally um, these communities were never sexual. Like ASMR was never like a sexual thing, but somehow, I guess on Twitch, if you ask most people what ASMR is, they think it's like people giving like ear blow jobs or whatever sure. um I, yeah i think if it's like very sexualized asmr that's probably a problem but like generally asmr is a category it's not supposed to be it's not generally a sexual thing it's not supposed to be a sexual thing but but it's so hard to draw like and then you have to have individual human beings listening to every stream to, to figure out where it's sexual where it's not, not. To unless you just stream. ban oh, just yeah. chatting so, just it's, it's, so again no it's, it's not to every stream and again i have to ask for like a little bit of good faith here like i know immediately because i still do listen to asmr sometimes when i'm working on shit i, I do i know immediately sure. what within two seconds of looking at something what i'm looking at okay if okay, i so open like if i open a youtube channel and i'm getting like a girl with like a plunging neckline thing and she's like hey guys today we're gonna do like it's we're, we're i'm watching like a softcore porn on, on youtube right it's way different right. than like oh here's like 55 top triggers for teenagers or blah 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 or here's 27 different checkout books of the library that make a certain noise when you open the pages right it's 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 just it's immediately noticeable as a totally different category and there is little to no ambiguity about it in my opinion yeah, but sorry, the, sorry, the idea that 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 it's it's difficult to like decide whether or not like a bikini streamer is sexualized or not is is pretty. Is okay, pretty wait, one sec. So, no, 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 wait, can I respond? One sec to what Destiny said. So, okay, so right now I agree with you that I, I mean, again, I don't watch ASMR content, so I, I, I maybe mm -hmm. I 
thought shouldn't weigh in on it or whatever. Yeah. Maybe right now it's the case that ASMR, it's clear when it's sexual or not sexual. But once they start enforcing that, uh, hey, no more sexual ASMR, then you're going to start to get some weird, like, you know, it's, they're going to, like, drop it in a little bit. They're going to pull it back a little bit. It'll be it'll become so much more ambiguous. And then, again, we're back in the same place where it's hard but to that's how, if, yeah, but, but no, no, but th there is a difference. If we're ambiguous because some girl, like, licks, like, an ear thing, like, one time every hour or whatever, sure. we're in a way different world than, like, uh, like here is, like, my, you know, two hours of aural simulation of blowjob sounds, right? It's a way sure. different world. And I'm okay with, like, the iffiness of that world versus where we're at now, which is, like, software yeah. world. And it's also, it's even, like, even when with what you say it's incredibly sad to me that a lot Clarifying of people now question. seem to think that asmr is literally just like fucking like blowjob sounds and that's all it is that's kind of sad to me no yes, no is, 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 is that what you thought is that what you think oh that's I think what you make it sound like when you say it when no. you're like oh okay no no no, no I, I understand question. yeah it's not i'm not thinking I, I think they're I can, like gagging sounds and shit so clarify question like like asmr whenever it gets said i think that it's more about sound than it is visual right so i think it's the visuals of things that are happening that definitely require more moderation versus like the sound because there's a lot of cases where there are things not, that, are said that if you don't if have some type of lot. experience <laughs> yeah. with the thing ahead of time then you might not understand the innuendo <laughs> right so i i promise you that there are plenty of ways are, are, to make explicitly sexual content yeah. using only sounds that you do yeah. not have to only you, it's not just visual i yeah, promise C you CTV, an entire, what it, of it. but okay. i want to say what like, do you think when okay. you hear audio book. Quick, quick question okay. all right so there are there uh, which, i don't i don't, I don't are we, there um, can we take ASMR, more hot tub streamers yep okay so uh, uh shaved yes. raised his hand a while ago and he never got to spoke speak bespoke um i just i him. mean it, i want to read like i know a little bit about advertising on websites and you can even see with like uh, websites that allow uh nsfw or unmoderated content basically the only advertisers they can get are like other nsfw products like yeah. jlist on 4chan is like the most popular advertiser and they sell like pony holes and stuff mm -hmm. um or like and it's really about two extremes so you either have to like focus on keeping all of your content like acceptable for a wide proportion of the population dylan you joked about it when uh counterpoints came in here and said the word penis which means you're going to get demonetized um but like the other half of it is if you do allow nsfw content you get some like really like the only ones that really pay money which of course i don't buy into these i know people who do um are like insanely malicious advertisements that try and like web hook into your yeah. your computer yeah. whenever you click on them um so yeah like it's actually okay to see hot tub streamers as a threat to people's profit incentives on twitch um it could definitely hurt i mean we're already seeing some level of hurt in global followers and growth at large maybe not a lot but i think some people will say that but yeah i think that that's an incredibly important point yeah, and I just want to jump in really quickly. So, so rules. Um, I understand like the fringe cases that were brought up, but rules almost necessitate exceptions. Uh, so, so for instance, like uh, what, what is it? I think somebody maybe it was like Hegel or something like that said like the 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 forwarding of a thesis almost automatically guarantees its antithesis. That's the same thing with a rule. As soon as you create a rule, there's almost a guarantee of an exception. Um, but just because there's fuzziness around rules or fuzziness around categories yeah, doesn't, doesn't mean, mean you, don't... you just get rid of them. Yeah, that doesn't mean you just eliminate rules or categories altogether so so for instance if we have a negative thing that 13 year olds now have access to softcore pornography on a regular basis um it seems like a lot of people get hooked into these parasocial relationships with very attractive women um but they're never going to get the kind of uh positive um positive like emotional or physical uh, attention that they probably actually want in real life and it's distracting from their real uh, IRL um, attempts to build relationships, um, then I think this needs to go into NSFW and it needs to go into an adult. That way adults are making the decisions about how they choose their time, uh, uh, choose to spend their time and their money. Um, and that, that that's pretty much it. But not for another 60 days, not until we have the banana hammock straight. But Connor, uh, the, the, the issue you brought up is an issue with all parasocial relationships. Sure, but I'm trying to capitalize on parasocial relationships, well, so don't talk see, too loud. Okay, that's sure, the, sorry. That's the thing. I do think that there are... <laughs> So there's a couple of different ways of, of analyzing this. I think that the um, the parasocial one, I I may, maybe call me call me black pilled on this particular issue. Um, I don't think that Twitch and YouTube are ever going to do anything, ever 
to move parasociality away from their, like to address parasociality on their platforms. They make way too much money off of it to ever address it. In fact, they push it really hard. They push content creators to be super parasocial as much as possible. They're never going to do anything about it. So, but I do think there's huge issues. I think one of the biggest risks of, um, of, of like a lot of these sort of like uh, lots of different types, even even just ch some non super sexual j just chatting ones, but especially when you're acting on all of these different avenues for ex like obvious parasociality, it becomes a risk. But the fact of the matter is, this entire industry is flush with parasociality. Every single one of us is guilty of it. We're doing it literally right now, most likely. Um, it's Stop really hard to deal with. Jesus Christ! Yeah, the, but the then, audience know, is right but, there. But but I promise you that the, the audience isn't going to do anything about it because they're hooked. And guess what? Twitch isn't going to do anything about it because they're hooked too. So unfortunately, <laughs> that's sticking around. We got to find better solutions to that. But with regard to the the sexual content, like um, I, I do agree that it's like it's not it's not super clean to line these things up. But like as it stands right now, nobody knows what you can like. Well, nobody knows what you can and cannot do on Twitch. Like, it's just, if this is a, a long-standing critique I've had of the TOS. The TOS is very unclear. And I do think that even even without in creating, like, a not safe for work segment um, or, or section of the website, I do think that the TOS could be modified to be more clear about what type of, um, of actions and context are okay or not okay. Um, obviously, there will always be people trying to find ways around the rules, um, but it would be a really, it would be a serious shame if we lost just chatting and ASMR as two genuinely enjoyable and and not, uh, you know, uh, areas of content just because of a handful of potentially problematic um, streamers. And and at the end of the day, like there's big risks to this. I, I agree there's large there's large risk, but it, it seems like a lot of this is, a lot of the biggest risks seem to be in scaring off advertisers, which seems to be like something that's going to happen one way or another at this point if there's not some action taken. So I think the um, key action would be to refine the TOS and then see if that's able to clear things up a little bit so that maybe some of the people who are currently doing it will back down a little bit or, or refine so that they're within TOS and we want a big of a problem. If necessary, create a not safe for work segment. I, just I'm, a, yeah. I'm a boomer, so I'm not on Twitch. What category are we in technically right now? Just chatting, baby. Just chatting. Damn. Can I ask a, can I ask a question? Sluts we are. <laughs> can I ask a question? So, uh, no. Like one of the problems was with uh, like the kids watching this content, right? How do you feel about kids? Like, there's obviously some political streams that are extremely radical. How do we feel about kids stumbling onto those streams that could potentially be even worse uh, than you know Eight, watching a video? I mean, I can address this. Like, I I I think that um, like unfortunately, like a lot of the 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 arguments that stem around trying to prevent children having access to certain types of content are like most of the time they do more harm than good and 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 i say that because like i mean we all know that no no every every kid under the age of 18 under the age of 13 has played a fucking m plus game else elsewise how would we have the stereotypes about xbox live being horrible and full of children playing things they shouldn't play um children they're going to get access to porn websites um and and it's it's unfortunate, but it's just a reality. And what we have to do is try and address those things to be as safe as possible without like doing ridiculous things like requiring you to upload a a, a state ID in order to have a Twitch account. Like as as much as like the the goal of protecting children from certain things is very very um, respectable, the reality is that the internet is super hyper accessible and it's really hard to clamp down on that. So it really ends up being about. Um, adjusting a number of different social concerns um like for example ha uh, encouraging parents to be more involved in their kids lives and in the decisions that their kids make i know that sounds silly but we know that that's the only answer for gaming as well that if you make all these weird rules about about shit like that it starts to have very bad repercussions for other people we don't want a world where twitch is run by the likes of what's that guy's name jack thompson or whatever the crazy anti-video game guy and i'm like like i mean that guy really went hard on that sort of stuff. He was pushing all kinds of laws, like making it possible to charge parents who buy mature games for their kids. Like that's, we get to a point where it becomes ridiculous. I do agree just, that children need to be protected. Yeah, okay. It just I sounds like you're trying a, to avoid I think there's a problem porn every year in general. and raise your kids better. Wait, okay, there was two people talking. I can't, okay. Who who was talking there? Sorry, there I was, was. I was. 
I was trying to. <laughs> yeah, VTuber <laughs> Destiny. Um, okay, so I'm gonna give it to Eris first. Who's the other person trying to talk, actually? Okay, the Nacho. Eris the Nacho. Um, I just, I find the whole, like, kid-friendly thing, like, strange, because I, I agree. Um, I do think Twitch needs to be, like, a kid-friendly platform. Um, that's obviously a, an important part of gaming and all that stuff. Um, but I faced, like, if, when I, I found out that, um, that I had accidentally broke, uh, TOS, um, in one instance where I was teaching about the history of anti-Semitism and I found out that you're not actually even allowed to show even in an educative kind of like environment um, you're not allowed to show any kind of um, like hateful imagery or something even if like I'm showing primary sources or something um, and that was like really really frustrating because it's like very necessary when you're teaching so even if I'm giving like um, content warnings and all that stuff I still couldn't do that um, so, like, I agree with you that I think that sometimes it can go too far, but it's just that it makes it all the more frustrating when I see, like, when I can't teach something that I think, like, would be totally acceptable to be teaching, like, even, like, a seventh grader or something, um, like, showing them, you know, the history of anti-Semitism or something like that. And, but then they can just go, and I can't do that, but then they could just go to someone else's stream um, and just see, like, oh, you know, a woman basically, like, half naked, half naked simulating a sexual but, act on a banana um and like you know and that's okay and it's just like it just makes no sense to me it just I, it feels like i don't know it feels like you get really punished um like in on uh, on this platform for not sexualizing yourself but um, the thing especially is, as a smaller creator so the thing is though that Wait, like your nacho you're, was next then could we go to you is that okay can I just respond quickly? I think the reason is, Eris, that you're- You didn't even wait, you didn't even wait for an so answer. Sorry. You didn't even wait for an answer. I'm so sorry. You I just gotta talk to anyway. <laughs> so the reason Eris is- Now I'm not gonna wait. Oh, okay. Now I'm not going to, because you didn't okay. even wait for an answer. Right, what if sorry, said yes? Nacho, sure. then he- uh, yeah, I mean, I, I'm like really minimizing your your uh, your retort there, Demon Mom. But it just really seemed like you were trying to avoid saying like put porn everywhere because they can find it, but uh, raise your kids better, like. At, I mean, is that too minimalistic? No. But I mean, I want to address it's that. It's just like I mean, <laughs> we. I, I I don't think that it's like I don't I don't know I don't think it's that like I think that's a very reductive uh, way of interpreting my argument. I just am saying that like there has to be a balance, right? Like we all acknowledge that like hey, having a having a a check a thing that that uh, appears that pops up that says hey, this is for eighteen year olds and older, um, is great but they're going to hit okay all the time. So then what's the next step? Then the next step is what you have them upload a photo ID and then you have porn sites that are, that are keeping uh, records of people's photo IDs, some sketch, like there's there, it, it's a, it's a logistical problem. It's not like a, a moral issue. I mean, the fact of the matter is there already is porn plastered everywhere. Like, especially if you, I mean, the, like in other countries, that's even more so than here. Like, uh, I'm not saying that that's the, the, like the ideal state. It's just like, that's how it is. And, and, certain aspects of that are very difficult to um to correct or adjust because if you do so you end up putting other people at risk you end up um blocking people who have a legitimate reason to access these things it's it's, it's an actual issue um and yeah uh with regard to um th there was one thing that Eris said that i kind of wanted to push back on a little bit which is um i the idea of like um I, I don't think that we can really attribute like the idea of needing to sex like women needing to sexualize themselves or femme presenting people needing to sexualize themselves on just this particular thing. I don't really I don't think it's really fair to push this onto the hot tub streamers. That is an issue that goes far beyond that, and I do agree it's the case. But that's true for anyone in any field. If you are like if you are sexier with your content, people are gonna most likely like it more. Um, but I don't know that like the presence of people who are like hot tub streaming is going to hurt political streamers. Um, although I will agree that like political streamers who sex it up a bit are probably going to do better than political streamers who don't in general with a few exceptions, but that doesn't have anything to do with the presence of those streamers. That's because I just don't think the there's a side stream right there in the speedo. So actually yeah. one thing I will say is somebody that has been on this platform on. for a long Wait. time. It's or what? Can I give it to him first? Then you destiny. Is that possible? You don't have to ask me. It's your show. Do it, buddy. That's okay. right. Destiny. Heem, you should take a note from Destiny. Okay, continue. 
Listen, Destiny's been doing this for 10 years. I'm I haven't even hit one year. Give me nine more years, bro. I'll get I'll learn. Don't worry. Um, okay, so I just want to respond to Eris. Uh so Eris, I understand your frustration. I think we all understand your frustration when it comes to the uh like you can't even educate on on these things. The problem is is that there just isn't enough people on Twitch to 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 watch every stream. I think there's like probably fucking hundreds of thousands of uh, streams that happen every day. They don't have enough staff to go around and watch and and check everybody's streams. There is a guy right now who is the biggest anti-COVID, anti-mask, anti-vaxxer in Canada. His name is Chris Sky. He has a Twitch channel right now where he promotes, actively promotes uh, anti-COVID, anti-vax propaganda. The other day I was watching his channel. He even dropped anti-Semitic uh, Holocaust denial. Okay, he dropped straight up Holocaust denial. I reported it. A bunch of people in my in my chat reported it. But he's still out here because like it's just very hard to. There's too many people on the platform, and like you can you even see it with partnered streamers that get Hurt. banned. They don't even hear. They don't even hear. Uh, they don't even hear back from their partner what is what is it called destiny the partner thing account like, manager. yeah the account manager doesn't even respond to them as to why they've been banned until their ban is up like they clearly have a shortage of staff and that's i think part of the reason why they're so yeah wishy-washy heemed i would agree with you that it is like a, a a shortage of staff but it's also an over-reliance on automated um on automated report functions what this does like it, it's actually terrible the way that it works right now basically encourages the worst actors to succeed so i'll give you an example from youtube that's not that doesn't have to do directly with twitch i had a video that was debunking a just blatant covid conspiracy theory racist like anti-chinese video that video is taken down deleted from youtube and i got a strike for it um while the original video my video had 100 views the video that got that i was responding to and and debunking had 90,000 views still up now even though and, and the reason for that is that like those of us who, would, who who are like engaging in the arena of ideas we usually don't go on these big report brigades but they will report the shit out of anything which means the automated system gets turned against people who might be doing actually good stuff um, and it doesn't work favorably to people who are churning out this other stuff. Same that I mean that's but part that's, of the reason why. That's um, what I think I would people guess. are actually upset about. What's that? Like, yeah, that's what I, mean, I, I, that's what I think people like all the people who are raging After against hot tub streamers. Then count. Um, yeah, all the people that are raging against hot tub streamers. I really feel like that's that's really what in general our people are upset about is like the double standard um, that they've seen. And I think like if Twitch needs to do something, it's to address that double standard first. Um, I don't I, even know and, if so much a double. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Eris. I, I just want no, to no, 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 you can do. Go ahead, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, Aris. it's fine. I was finished by point. <laughs> Yeah, I could oh. care less about. Sorry, Demon, go ahead. I know you're about. Yeah, to no. All I was gonna say is like, I, I, I don't, I don't know that it's even a double standard. So, so much as there's not even a good standard to go off of, right? Like, um, we've gotten really mixed messages. I know for a fact that like Lucid Fox was in communication at one point with a with a Twitch uh, partner support person who said that, oh, okay, certain educational context and protest footage and stuff like that is still fine, even if some hateful messages appear. Um, but then in the TOS, it says you can't use it in educational contexts. And I know personally people, someone like Chud Logic, for example, who had their stream taken down, presumably for a few seconds of of a a image that he was using to talk about the dangers of extremism, which had a uh, a, a Nazi flag in it, got his his uh, channel taken down for a week. And it's like, so it's not even so much of a double standard as is as as much as it's just no standard or no consistency whatsoever. And it is a big problem. I think that refining the TOS and committing like a team of people that they're actually willing to invest in would do so much to to benefit everyone involved. But here's the thing. I don't know if it's going to benefit Twitch and Amazon, right? Like they probably make money not running running with a skeleton crew. And I don't know. I don't know how we I don't know how you overcome that. Well, the um well fuck now we're moved past it but the, there was a comment earlier about how like um the audiences that hot tub people bring or whatever that there aren't expectations fostered on a platform you know if i was to boot up a chatterbait stream and i were to just start talking about politics everybody on that platform i imagine probably get pretty upset 
because they're not there to see politics. I, I think that depending mm. on the types of people you have Good on idea. the uh, platform, you're going to foster certain expectations for certain types of content. Um, this is something that we all understand to be true um, for a lot of the older people here. Or I don't know if there are any older people here, but there used to be a stream on this platform called Ice Poseidon. And one of the biggest reasons why people wanted him off the platform, aside from whatever shit Twitch said, um, a lot of people don't remember this, but it's because the audience that he brought here was actually incredibly toxic. Not, not just the streamers or not just the content that they did or whatever, but it was actually like all of the new people that were coming to Twitch to watch. All of those people, anytime Ice would go offline, would all flood the other chats and people hated it. And then you have other like larger female streamers now that are starting to complain that like there is like this expectation as a female streamer um, that doesn't exist for male streamers where it's like you where's your OnlyFans? Like, or do you have a Patreon? Will you do, do you do cosplay? Like there is kind of this expectation being created that to be a large successful uh, woman oh, on Twitch, I, you need to be doing yeah, not safe for content. That, I'm getting that though. Like I've got, it, I'm getting it so much that I had to actually make an OF link redeemable thing in the channel points. So that at least that there's like a, a thing. So I it happens guys, to male streamers No, it dude. does not happen to male streamers in any. I appreciate it just that. happened, bro. I don't know what to tell you. All right. It, so. I did every the, day, I every did day, the people ask me for a body chat. pillow. <laughs> I mean, I Do people I, I ask don't... you for a body pillow, CTV, huh? I mean, I'm. I, I think I will I, have I'm made it once really they ask me for a body pillow. pillow. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's gonna be yeah. that's gonna be the bar for success. <laughs> By the way, I, I don't um, I don't entirely disagree with you, uh, Destiny, about the um, about the expectation. Um, like I just, I, don't know, I I think it's a little hard to, to to suss out how far that goes, right? Like I mean, for example, I mean I think a lot of people come to Twitch expecting um, gameplay, and yet nonetheless, the just there's a lot of just chatting in politics communities that have been fostered on here that aren't in line with the expectations of what a lot of people came to Twitch for but I would say are valuable for the platform and good and can coexist with, um, with uh, you know, gaming content without necessarily taking away from Twitch's gaming vibe. I, it's, I don't know, I just, I do think that's a little bit of a harder spot. Like, I, I will agree with you that yes, most people won't go to Chatterbait to find a politics stream, but that's a little bit more of a single purpose website. Whereas Twitch has clearly shown an interest in expanding beyond just gaming I just think they need to decide and make up their mind exactly what they want to do and let us all know so that we can make decisions accordingly. Because as right. it stands right now, their intentions are very unclear and all. And it seems like a lot of their creators are getting whiplash both from TOS issues and also from content expectations. Yeah, I actually got an announcement to make right now. It's a perfect time to make this announcement. So so the, the politics community has been infiltrated. I was sent here in order to establish the Infinity Acre Wood as the gaming league for Twitch politics streamers to be able to participate in in Halo 3, right? It, using the Master Chief Collection, because here in the forwarding future, we are going to be uh, doing it with Halo Infinite, right? So the community's infiltrated. There, there's a, a real clear way for us to be able to put, to marry gaming and politics in the community and for people to be able to have a way to shit talk each other and not always have to be so toxic along political lines. So this is how we... This is how we actually grow the community is by doing something like this. And this is the the dream for Twitch moving forward. So Amen. I'm happy I could break it. Uh, counter, you were you wrote you rose your hand. Uh, I can you. I can do it in closing. How much longer are we running for? Um fuck, we could go at least fourteen more minutes before I would have to wrap it up. All right, cool. Then, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll say this. Uh, so if so, my my uh, short term goal is uh, you'll get a hot tub stream at 10k. If we break 100k, I'll make a, a body pillow and uh, sell it as merch on a website. So there you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, looks okay, like um, everybody's intellectual just about done. theft. <laughs> looks like we're just about done with this topic. So I'm gonna go around. Everybody's gonna make ending statements. We're gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna start with Heemed in the top left hand corner. Are we doing out, like? Oh, yeah, and also do your outro, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. So, oh, and Maddie, I, I want to say Maddie Cakes was here earlier. Be sure to support uh, her, co uh, her content as well. Okay. Team. Okay. Um, yeah, so I, I, I initially said when we started this topic that this isn't something that I had thought about too much. Uh, I just gave you my initial point of view that I, I th th that it becomes ambiguous as to what is sexual or not I, again mm -hmm. like I have a beard cam on my uh, stream which a lot of people would say it could be considered sexual like I don't know it's just it's it's vague don't make that face destiny you should see the way people thirst about it in chat bro and uh and then the other thing I want to say though you did bring up a fucking great point that I that swayed me a little bit about like the 13 year old 
doing a hot tub stream uh i think like that i hadn't considered that before and that was a great point you brought up uh and yeah i'll have to give it some more thought and uh yeah that's it i oh and, and so just plugging my channel i'm dr heemed out i i stream monday to friday 5 30 a.m eastern time until 8 a.m eastern time uh it's the only time i have to insane consistent. absolutely insane i have it, no clue why you do that it's because I have to go to work. I, I do research at the hospital, so I, I go until eight oh, and then I go at nine. People are sick and need attention. <laughs> I know. Get poggers. Man. I know. I know. I know. I gotta keep grinding. But uh, yeah, we have a good time. When when Destiny was banned, I was uh, coined as the up next upcoming Omni Liberal. Uh, so take take that for what you will. Uh, but now he's back, so he's regained his uh, position. Uh, yeah, it was really fucking fun. I had a lot of uh, fun. Uh, if anybody wants to chat furthermore. We can uh, chat anytime. And uh, thanks for having me on, Dylan. It was a great time. And I'm glad to see you're feeling better. Where's this rumor that I'm feeling better? <laughs> I mean, you're yeah, I was like, no, no, he looks really grumpy to me right now. <laughs> if you weren't and feeling better. He might have gotten sick again after I, this. I'm, I'm feeling, look, look, the thing is, I am feeling not almost dead, right? Because I almost went into septic shock. So that's good. But I'm still not feeling great. I'm still feeling pretty bad, right? So it's like, I guess technically I am feeling better, right? Yeah, technically. Well, continue right. to feel better. How's that? Okay. Sorry, I'm sorry I uh, overspoke or whatever the fuck. Misspoke, whatever. Misspoke? Okay. Demon Mama. Um, yeah, I think it's a pretty complicated issue, but a lot of it, um, unfortunately, I, I do think falls at the feet of Twitch to be more clear about what they want from from the platform, from their, their platform and from their TOS. Um, there's a lot of issues with TOS on this platform. Um, I, I do think there is some validity to the to the argument of like you, you, of like what Destiny said about about uh, you'll know it when you see it. I do think there's some validity to that. However, that requires actually having a hands-on team that can look at reports of like, hey, this is over the line. Great example of this that we already have had unfold and not really be well resolved is the YouTube just for kids videos. Um, like there's been like a ton of, of like, I think there's a down the rabbit hole episode about this, about these very weird kids videos that sometimes had extremely strange, like sexual content in them that were being churned out by like almost by algorithm. And the, the, the computers just couldn't deal with them. And like, and, and they never really got any people to sit down and filter through them as well. I, I do think that there needs to be um, on, on the side of these companies like Twitch and like YouTube and a lot of these other broadcasting companies, a devotion to having more human eyes on it that can make decisions and that can come to nuanced decisions and that can also offer feedback on how to um, enforce and improve the TOS. Robots can't tell you where your TOS is going wrong. They can just blindly enforce TOS um, according to whatever rules you give them. And as it turns out, that's a, a really messy way of doing things on a medium like this. Okay, oh, uh, and my name is Demon Mama. Um, you can find all of my stuff at demonmama.com. Uh, forward slash live to join the chat. I'll be doing Q and A's and some debates and stuff after this, as well as a review of uh, Dr. Heem's out, Heem Doubt's content. So we, uh, I've received permission. We're going to be talking about that later. So come on by. I got you, I got brigaded. I got brigaded by Nazis with down votes on my YouTube video. Don't you worry. We'll we'll make sure some some constructive comments come your way. All right. Thank you. Okay. Wonderful. Gonna throw it over the shaved. Mute. That's a great point, Shave. Well, I didn't do it the entire time until now. <laughs> um, online communities have had a horrid time combating illicit content. There's not like a lot of really good moderation tools, and the ones that are available are pretty bare bones. Um, and not only that, there's been huge debate over time as the internet has grown over what is deemed acceptable or not. Um, a lot of these issues still might plague judgment today, such as a specific example being Reddit um, and like its old jailbait community and the upskirts and all that shit that they used to do and allow. Like there are still moderators and known people who are associated with all of that still in like administrative or moderation positions on Reddit. Um, I think I mentioned earlier about like populations on the internet interacting with each other, especially between like 
in 2016 where you saw this massive spike in activity on like Reddit, 4chan, and all these other communities around politics. Um, these hot tub streamers are essentially just invaders to us. Um, uh, they're non-gamers, they're women, they're people we hate, just jokingly. Um, but like, they probably won't be around any longer than Twitch can make money off of them. Eventually, like, they're probably gonna have to make some kind of ruling. And I, I mentioned earlier about like ad revenue. Um, if if it starts to cut into ad revenue and sponsors pull out because thirteen year olds are seeing boobies, like that they're going to like make a ruling. But right now they're making quite a bit of money off of like tips and donations, I would assume. Okay. I'm going to throw it over to Eris. Hello. Um, yeah, I, I'm actually, I was really happy with this conversation. Like surprising. It was, uh, I, I was kind of expecting some uh, of the typical arguments I hear about this, which is like virtue sing signaling liberal feminist takes about like, oh, it's just their body. That's it. Like you're just telling women what to do with their bodies. And uh, it was cool. We had a way more nuanced discussion. So that was um, that was interesting. Um, but uh, hello, I am aristocracy, uh, you know, the good kind of aristocracy, the one spelled with an E. Um, uh, you know, my my chat is my my community is the only place where both lefties and righties and centrists join together to oppress the lower classes together. You know, um, and I also run Calliopean Club, uh, which is you know great intellectual Discord server. But you should uh, you should watch my streams. I do mostly history streams and I do interviews, um, and my videos, particularly my history videos, where you know I talk about degenerate things like the history of cuckoldry and stuff. Um, you know, are, are really really funny. So you should search me on YouTube too. Um, but yeah, thanks uh, thanks for having me, Dylan. And this has been really cool. <laughs> no problem. I'm gonna throw that over to American Nacho. Hey, uh, so I'm American Nacho. I stream and play video games, whatever. I want to touch on the last uh, comment first just to make sure, like, I, I, I want to address the fact that everybody backed off the hot tub uh, streaming content as soon as we, we allowed uh, the youngest person on the platform, 13-year-olds, to be allowed to do hot tub streams. Uh, I think it's bad for advertisement, for revenue, for overall, like, providing free content to all the viewers, like, it's bad for everybody because advertisers are not going to want to come here. They're not going to want to allow us to provide. It's, it's going to be harder for us to uh, provide like free content to everybody else. Um, I really just wanted to shout out, uh, you know, to, to, to end this on a really wholesome note. My mom started uh, sponsoring my channel. Okay. So I'm going to tell you guys where to go with that. I don't care if you follow me. My mom's a lefty. So if I lean right, you can say, fuck Nacho. We're going to go follow his mom. Uh, go follow my mom on Instagram. Her at is uh, bringing spring. Okay, she's doing a hashtag 365 days of art. Her uh, website is bringingspring.com. If you use code Nacho25, you can get 25% all of your purchases. And I get a little slice of the pie too. Okay, but also a percentage of all the purchases go to Step to Hope, which is which is a local nonprofit organization that provides shelter to and education for domestic abuse victims. Okay, so please go uh, do that. It's awesome. She's an amazing artist. Go check it out. Okay, love you guys. Thanks for having me on. Wonderful. Nice. Your mother's an amazing woman. Uh, throwing it over to counterpoints. Yeah. So no, love love being here. Super fun, uh, Dylan. If this is the last one, we're gonna have words in person. I mean, it'll probably be over beer, but it's okay. Um, so uh, my name is Connor. I run a YouTube channel named Counterpoints. Common spelling. Literally, jump onto YouTube, type in Counterpoints. Uh, you can find me there. And then uh, basically, I do a whole bunch of stuff. I'm a Marine veteran of four years, person other than grunt, so pogue or pog, if you will. Um, then also a law enforcement veteran of four years, three years on the road, one year in the schools. Um, right now, I'm doing a whole bunch of different stuff. I'm reacting to Full Metal Jacket, breaking down uh, all of the uh, psychology and all of the tactical issues that go on inside Full Metal Jacket. Um, same, same thing with End of Watch, which is an excellent law enforcement movie. I'm also doing that for Warhammer 40,000, which is one of my passions. Um, if you're wondering what I'm painting while I'm hanging out with you guys, I'm actually painting Warhammer 40,000 miniatures. I point, uh, I post those to my Twitter, which is Connor Points, C-O-N-O-R-P-O-I-N-T-S, C-O-N-O-R-P-O-I-N-T-S. Um, I also post memes there. Identify as center right, but in general, just love yelling at people about politics on the internet. Um, and that's me. So I had a beautiful conversation. Uh, you should also follow all these wonderful people and uh, bully Dylan to keep the hippy dippy uh, continuing. Thin your paints. Thin your paints. Two thin coats. <laughs> Throwing it over to CTV. 
Yeah, so the uh, conversation's been pretty good. I think that at the bottom of all of it is uh, moderation and uh, even back to the very first thing that we talked about with regard to censoring on Facebook, right? Like the conversation between publisher and platform and uh, how I kind of feel like that the best way for corporations to proceed moving forward would be to focus on their user interface, which would help with moderation and, you know, et cetera. So that would just end up being better at the end of the day. Uh, as far as everything else is concerned, I am Critically Thinking Veteran. Uh, you can find me at on Twitch under the same name. You can go to criticallythinkingveteran.com. Um, you can also go over to our Discord, which is the Infinity Acre Wood, where we host Halo tournaments and, and uh, a large community that involves a university, a chapel, a coliseum where we actually fight, uh, and a, a myriad of other, you know, wonderful people that occupy the space uh if this is in fact the last hippy dippy right then it's only fair to say that it's been one hell of a ride right and uh i've enjoyed being here a part of it every single time that i have wonderful okay uh we're gonna throw it over to destiny now Hi, I'm Destiny, um, twitch.tv slash destiny, youtube.com slash destiny. It's been fun being here. Um, I love you, Dylan. Good luck. <laughs> That's all I got. What do you mean good luck? Good luck at what? Well, oh, at the rest of your life, I guess. When you're leaving the hippy dippy, you're probably going to fade into obscurity as a streamer. You're not going to be doing this anymore for income. <laughs> oh, Who the yeah. fuck knows what else you're going to be doing. Bully. Bully Damn. him harder. Bully him back into his job. <laughs> Look, I, if, I, if you want me to be compl bluntly honest, mm -hmm. I love Hippy Dippy. I'm still going to do championship. Mm -hmm. The thing is, I just hate everyone involved. And what I mean by that is, like, the guests. True. I understand. Do you want me to, um, on my site, because um, I know you can't do it easily on Twitch. You, buddy. Do, you, do you want me to change your name right now to uh, Mindwaves 2.0, or do you want to wait a little bit? <laughs> don't, oh, <laughs> don't do that. Look, Dylan. Uh, Look, Yo, you you know, I, I work on these long-term projects, and the worst thing I can ever get from somebody, and this has happened more often from like bigger content, is a maybe. Because then I'm in the position of like of a no and a yes. I know what to do. If I get a no, okay, I got to reroute, do this new thing. If I get a yes, okay, let's work, continue on the project. Maybe you're in this limbo where you're trying to kind of like make a show happen, but they just won't respond to you. And I've had to deal with that a lot recently with a certain thing I've been trying to get done. And that's on top of last second cancellations, people like last second saying, oh, I got to leave early. And, and yeah, this is this actually happening. like, if the scheduling is actually a problem for you, you just got to do the tried and true, my dude. Message what? Summit, just lie about your other guests. If you message me and say some shit like, hey, do you want to do Hippie Dippy on Friday? Like Lauren Southern's going to be there. I'll say yes. You can probably also get some other really big figures to say yes. And then by the time everybody shows up, even if you're like, oh, Lauren Southern canceled, you're going to have other big figures that agree. And then they'll say That feels there. like it'll end up like Firefest one day. Like you'll, like everybody will cancel last second <laughs> once I can't like deliver on anything. And then I'm the one stuck with the ticket, right? It's okay. I'll be here for if you. You're still, you can lie to everyone. Yeah, and you then you have to get up. people like me. <laughs> Wonderful. Nah, be like, it's not Joe. Yes, That's excellent. Yeah, <laughs> just don't, God, don't forget. Just, look, I forgot just, the look. protest in my outro. Everyone protest. Okay, chat, rise up, dude. This is a <laughs> communist yeah, chat. Everyone rise up and demand that we continue the Hippy Dippy podcast. Okay, what? I'll show up every fucking Friday, Dylan. All right. Same. I I I, 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 under, I understand that. It's just that it's very uh it's just very stressful because i had to deal with all this happening at the same time that i almost go into like septic shock right and i have to go to the hospital at the same time with finals and i'm dealing with all of that and as that's happening people are like damn i'm so sorry that you're going through like septic shock and you're with all this going on in your life anyway i gotta cancel you have a nice day like that's the fucking type <laughs> shit of messages i'm getting right like that that type of just <clears throat> cold blooded i don't care is like the type of stuff. That's yeah, like, but Dylan, okay, this then, is where like, why I don't even bother. I want to point you to a fact, though, right? Let me tell you the one thing that I know for a fact you didn't think this week. There was never a doubt in your mind after I told you that I was going to be there, whether or not I was going to be there. Mm hmm. True. You just got to make sure you yeah, remember hey, the people me, that. Well, they can you just be Mike gone. from PA? I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And, and, Mike and from he, PA can't he even stay you, out without quitting. Right? Like he right made you a fucking too. leash. He made you a fucking leash, friend. He did <laughs> make me a leash. Yeah. yeah. Or a dog. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to say. 
Destiny, what? unironically, let's have a conversation about ASMR sometime. I have a feeling we could have a fucking awesome conversation. You know what? I bet we could have a great conversation. Peace. That's possible, but I still fucking hate you as a human being. So. Oh, I know you do. Oh, trust me. Everyone in the world knows that, Destiny. You've made that abundantly clear. All right. Just making sure. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to go probably pass out in the middle of my room now. So I'm going to pass you all, uh, bid you all adieu. Thank I you very actually much for coming. didn't know that. Destiny, I didn't know you didn't like Demon Mama like that, but now I know. Yeah, they used to date back in high so school. So Demon Mama just lied. Everybody didn't fucking know, right? Over here making false claims again. Lying <laughs> Demon Mama. Lying <laughs> Demon Mama. If you guys ever want me to talk about your issues, I'm happy to okay, do it on my show. We're drinking and we're doing a rock <laughs> band party, okay? Right. Come fucking join the after party. I love all Bye. you guys. The vaccine shit made me want to video game myself, dude. Oh, yeah. Well, what are you going to do? It's so hard to bring nuance topics on twitch i understand why people call you toxic as fuck like you've been doing this for nine years i've been doing this for one and some days i'm just like i, I can't i can't do it anymore how do you do it i don't know man just one screaming fest at a time i mean i enjoy like all the shitting like all the screaming and the fighting like that's fun for me so if i was here to just have serious conversations i probably wouldn't do it anymore well i mean it's a little better on twitch uh on twitter though it's absolutely insane mm -hmm. Um, the the yeah, positions you take become kind of like calling cards for your like ideologies rather than like having any type of real actual position too, right? So it's like a it's a harder thing to do. So it, mm -hmm. like, it doesn't the vaccine isn't really no one cares about that. What we're really talking about is like, are you an evil cuck that supports like big business, or are yeah, you like yeah. a compassionate human being that wants like other non-American, non-rich humans to survive? Right. That's basically what the arguments all boil down to it's just weird because like the arguments are they just fall within like a little bit of analysis um That's, yeah. Like, yeah like the the fucking like why would these companies not want to make money why would they not want to license it out it, it makes no sense yeah no, um, i mean yeah of course but i guess uh the, the more interesting thing that I wanted to ask you about, mm -hmm. like, uh, we can go get back into the vaccines. When you say that, uh, I, I'm surprised to see that you were kind of against the hot tub streams. Um, and I, my question to you would be, how do you feel about Molina's streams? Yeah, I mean, I don't think that that type of stuff should be allowed. Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay, I didn't I didn't know what your position was on it. Yeah. I mean, as long um, as it is allowed, you might as well go for it. Like, fuck, it's not like... I mean, it's more money for our household, I guess. But yeah, like I think that the there should, um, the the kind of like the weird like, um, softcore porny stuff is a little bit strange. Yeah, fair enough. I think that the example you brought up about the thirteen-year-old was was really fucking got me thinking. <laughs> What's the age that you can start streaming at? Is it thirteen? I think it's thirteen. That's why I brought it up. Yeah. Um, but how does it work with money and stuff? Like, isn't that basically like a child, like a 13 year old? You probably get like an adult work. to sign off for it and get money for it, would be my guess. Or maybe you can't be a partner until you're 18. I don't know. Or maybe a parent can sign for you. Hmm. Um, yeah, I guess, uh, it, man, you came in right at the right time during that that discussion because Demon Mama and I are very, like, I mean, like, I, I've seen your discussions with her mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> I can see why you get frustrated. But like we've never had a bad discussion or anything, so I felt like it was about to get fucking heated because a couple times I said things that I thought were pretty, on like the 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 four thousand nine hundred ninety nine medications that fail compared to the one that makes it to market, and then like Demon Mama was just like making faces at me. I, I don't know. Uh, so fuck you. You came in at the right time. Yeah, I think the problem. Yeah, people misunderstand. It's really strange that. The argument is just like, it's so strange because it's like, um, people will say like, oh, okay, well, we need to publicly fund it because what about stuff that's not popular? Like, that'll never get cured. It's like, okay, but if we publicly fund stuff, our public money should probably go towards whatever helps most people, right? So... Yeah, things that we can point to, like the fucking infrastructure that they all love to complain about. Or, I mean, like, even if it was, like, medicine, like, the money's going to end up going towards the most popular diseases anyway, right? Because that's what publicly we should be doing. It's going to be the most, like, visible shit, right? So you have, like, the exact same problem. Except now that it's publicly funded, you literally have zero chance of anybody, like, stepping in and something because it's all public now. But, yeah. It's just shitty because, like, generally, I, I, I'm i for, like, taxing billionaires and stuff. But we've been put in this position where I have to come out and say and explain to people that, like, Bill Gates has been doing this work for decades when it comes to global public health. And, like, people laugh at that as though it's a meme. Mm -hmm. 
it's so it's so frustrating to to have to fucking i don't know and i guess maybe it's it's e a little bit easier for you because you have a much bigger platform as someone who's a small content creator i i, I fucking get shit on it's it's insane like everyone just says oh you're a billionaire simp it's like no i actually maybe thought about these positions and like read an article past the headlines oh and yeah because that's what i came into the conversation because i think demo mom was accusing you of like simping for bill gates or something yeah and like this whole yeah. like vaccine thing is like oh well obviously bill gates just wants big business and it's like what really do we really think that like a guy that he's like 65 years old retired like does all trade like is is that really what he's doing with his life now is he just he just wants to be a perma simp for like big business and patents is that really what we want to like, i don't know or even or even more interesting is uh that bill gates has spent 30 years dedicating his life to to helping global health mm -hmm. and what now at the time where it's needed that most he he's gonna fuck in colors and <laughs> yeah yeah stuff. it's so weird man it's uh -huh. so weird um but anyways yeah so i just wanted to fucking vent a little bit and tell you how frustrating it is i have i've had like five hour streams where i just have caller after caller calling in to fucking just tell me how i don't understand science even though i'm literally like going through the process mm -hmm. um well, it was nice fucking tag team debating with, with you on a topic we both agree on and uh i look forward to running into you again in the future okay well have fun be careful buddy okay remember to hit that like and subscribe and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed goodbye my little poggers goodbye poggers good goodbye my little poggers <laughs>